Hey, folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome, welcome, welcome to our Monday stream, or as we're going to be playing Victoria 3 as two Sicilies, should I say... Buongiorno. <laughs> Hello, everybody! Oh, man, I hope everyone has reached maximum hype levels for Victoria 3. I'm really excited about it, because I've been playing it a bunch for the last little bit. I don't know if I'm actually supposed to say how long I've had it. It's been a while. But really, for me... Playing games is just not the same if I'm not getting to talk to people about it. I, for me, playing video games has now become a massively multiplayer um, sort of sort of vibe all the time. Doesn't matter what the game is, it has to be a massive mi multiplayer event for me to really properly enjoy it. Uh, so now we've got that going on. <laughs> Money making Mondays. That does sound pretty good. Um, Victoria 41. I know, right? Like, come on, this game is one day away from release, so obviously we should have news about the sequel already. Hey, Cassius Maximus! Thank you very much for the sub. We obviously got a bunch of gift subs and resubs that we're gonna be checking out in just a scooch here. Hey, Quill, pay attention, there's a new subscriber. And another one, Blind Johnny, welcome to the party. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna be playing as two Sicilies today. Now, for those of you who are wondering, I am gonna be doing a YouTube series as Kanda, which started yesterday. Now, yesterday I could post the video because it was a sponsored uh, video that was arranged with Paradox and everything. Technically, I can't post another YouTube video until tomorrow. So tomorrow you're gonna have Canada episode two, and then three, and then four, and then so on. I've got I've got a, a little bit uh, pre-recorded. Uh, so we're gonna start a different run today, parallel to the Canadian one, to try something different. We had a few discussions on the Twitters and the Discords about what to play. Um, but I think I'm gonna play, I'm just gonna click on Sandbox so we get none of the uh, contextual little mini quests here. I'm gonna try to explain slightly less in this stream than on the YouTube video, although I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of time before we unpause and a lot of strategizing, but we'll see. Um, anyway, we're gonna be playing as the two Sicilies over here, and it's gonna be quite different from playing as Canada because we start has a much bigger population, bigger GDP, we're also independent, um, and so a lot of the vibes we're gonna be going for are gonna be quite different. There are some peaceful diplomatic ways to unify Italy but of course I'm sure we can do it in a more aggressive way so we'll see about that so now that we're loaded in here and we're loading those two Sicilies we're gonna take a quick look at the subs and resubs before we go two hours no unpause since it's Quill right I mean we'll see mm -hmm. reform the Roman Empire yep maybe maybe something like that wow my guy's beard is um a hundred percent neck beard 100% neck beard and nothing else. Wow, that is um that is awfully special. <laughs> you show what pops are supporting the woo the, the well, we'll be taking a look at the pops, I'm sure. Okay, really quickly, let's read the subs and resubs because I'm sure a lot of people are going to be eager for us to get in here. Uh, we've got um, brand new subs from, yes, the Crazy Head Gamer. Thanks for subscribing. Blind Johnny as well, remembering that prime button. Cassius Maximus Meridius. Uh, thank you so much for joining the channel. Uh, if you are on Discord, oh, Dalen Lard is also a new subscriber. Uh, if you do check down below or you do exclamation mark Discord, Discord in the chat, you can get some information on how to join the subscriber Discord. Discord. We've also got some resubs from Adian Tries at six months, Lord Warfire at 60 months. There's a five year Twitch anniversary. Desert Tigers at 24 months. I think that's also maybe a Twitch anniversary. I'm not good at math, but I'm pretty sure that's two years. Poem Malta at 33 months. Uh, are there things you can name after subs? I'm not sure. We could look into that maybe, but we might just save sub names for when we get back to Rimworld, which is going to be on Saturday. New Roman Gamer is resub for 11 months. Fluffy Warhog is at three months. Thripes Wives is at 40. Eyes Breath is at 14. Vergotson's at 43 months. Fimasutru is at 92 months. We've also got Jerus at 74 months. Jam Boswick's at 45. Drynes at 60 months. There's another five year Twitch anniversary. Jazeem's at 23 months. Goat the Dog's at 30. Mr. Galdor's at 22 months. Silent the Hunter's at 21. McMahon's at 10 months. Dalxin's at 28 months. Scrolling past all the gift subs, which I'll acknowledge in just a second here. All right. Uh, well, yes, we did get some gift subs. Midnight Rider start us off with a big clump of gift subs. Thank you very much for that. For Evil Not Good, big support of the channel has sent in a bunch more as well as some bits, which is very appreciated. Thank you so much uh, for helping to grow the channel with those gift subs. I really do like it because it brings more people in the community. It's wonderful. In position as well with the gift subs. Thank you very much over there. 
and this is scrolling too fast. My apologies if I've missed anything. We got some bits from Cassius Maximus Meridius. Uh, Fletcher Reed sent in some bits as well. Dracoen sent in some bits. Free not good with the bits. Uh, Draconium with bits. Thank you very much for that. And now we've got Alistorn, who, uh, feel free to harass him in chat because he's one of the, the Victoria devs. <clears throat> has contributed to the Whiskey and Chocolate Fund to say, I've waited for this day so long. I think we all have. Uh, now we got, okay, a few more subs coming in really quick that I want to acknowledge, and then I promise we're going to start playing. We got brand new subs from Average Guy 93 Mopey2, Unusually Sleepy, uh, Darkwing Duck. Excellent name. Excellent name. Thank you very much for joining. So did Crazy Head Gamer. Uh, thank you so much for that. We got resubs, QCircs at 33 months. Erixit has been here for 96 months. Veretius is at 32. Noasi is at three months. Raiders at 16. Jamrod's at 21. Mechalize at 29 months. Mr. Ubershroom at 93. Salir's at 55. Adion's at six months. Thank you very much for that. Could I technically stream the next Canada video on Twitch? Conceivably, that might be possible, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, and, uh, yeah, okay. Oh my god, another new subscriber. I really, I do want to start playing the, oh, that's the old pop-ups that I've already read out loud. Good. I want to start playing the game because I know a lot of people are here for that, but I'm, I'm going to try to acknowledge things as we go forward. Two Sicilies. So I, I've taken a quick gander at Two Sicilies, but we're going to do it together here to try to get an idea about what our situation is, right? So obviously we're in the southern half of Italy over here. Uh, right away, if we do take a little peek at the journal, we can see we do have a special journal entry called Risorgimento. Listen, my, my Italian is going to be terrible. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be this terrible. Buongiorno. But it's going to be pretty bad, so just get used to it. But we do have a journal entry here that um, will allow us to potentially integrate more Italian minor nations. So if as long as we are a major power or better, if we have unlocked nationalism, which we don't right now, um, and we are independent, then we can have other people... Uh, unify with us as long as they're part of our customs union. So that seems like a very convenient way to pull in more bits of, of Italia over here. Uh, if we do look at our cultures, because we have Italian culture, we do have a bouton over here to form the Italian Empire, but we're going to need a bunch more regions before that becomes a possibility. So that's going to be kind of a goal. And the fact that we can do it uh, diplomatically sounds excellent to me. I'm very hyped for that. So I feel like right away I should probably start some diplomatic overtures to hey, my cool. neighbors hey, here. Carl, hey, thanks for subbing. So, and my apologies if I'm going to miss anyone over here. It's going to be a hectic, crazy day. I do have the ability to declare a couple more regions as interests. Now, all of Italy is already locked in as an interest, which is great. That that seems very appropriate for us, so we don't have to worry about that. Other than that, I mean, if I was looking to go into some colonization right away, I might, I might drop some interest over here so we could do it. But otherwise, I think I'm just going to just declare an interest in the happenings and goings-ons uh, nearby. I would actually like to consider declaring war on maybe some people across the sea, do a whole Myra Nostrum kind of thing. But currently, uh, Tunis and Tripoli, um, I think, are... One's a puppet of Ethiopia. Yeah, so Tripoli is, or Tripolitania, is a puppet of the Ottomans, and Tunisia is a protectorate of the Ottomans. So that doesn't really seem like the sort of thing I want to mess with. France has got the north coast of Algeria over here. Morocco is independent. I mean, maybe something that, that could happen, but I think there's not like an immediate rush to war, I think, um, at this situation. So with that, I'm just going to declare interest on like, let's say, what is this called? Yeah, the South Germany zone. And then I might put it in the Rhine zone. So, you know, we'll get alerted about anything that Belgium, this artificial, weird, fancy cr country that exists in this game, this alt history country. Um, anything that happens to them, maybe we'll get a little bit of news tips about right away. So we're going to declare that as our diplomatic interest. We're also going to start spending some of our diplomatic influence here. Mostly, I think, to just make some friends right now. We're going to try to make friends with maybe uh, the two closest neighbors in Italy. Maybe we can pull them into our diplomatic zone. Or maybe I should focus on one of the smaller ones, like Luca. The smaller ones are um, going to be... Uh, less costly. I think the cost and influence is based on the rank of the country. So I guess these were all 150. So we'll do those and see what happens. And then maybe we'll make friends with, um, I don't know, France. And then maybe we can work on Austria later. But right now they're a little expensive. So I'll just click on Modena over here. And so we'll just develop some friendship. But yeah, maybe we can have some, some powerful people watch our back. 
Now we're gonna have to choose our technology, but before I do that, I really want to take a look at um, what our what our production buildings are, both the rural resource generators as well as our industrial buildings, as well as to get a sense of our market. What do we have? What do we short on? That sort of thing. Now in our Canada run, we are part of the British market, um, which changes things dramatically because the in the British market, when we're playing as one of the Canadian one of the Canadas. Our contribution to the market, especially at the start of the game, is very, very, very small. So the market basically is what it is um, because of just everyone else that's involved in it. However, in this case, the market, the Sicilian market, is literally just us right now. So whatever is going on in the market is entirely based on what we're doing, either producing locally or we are importing, exporting. Okay, the sounds are a little high. Okay, I I messed with the volumes before the stream started because I wanted to just play the uh, the game sound like the the game music, but uh, I'll drop it. Uh, let me drop it down to here for the master volume. Or maybe ex if the music's okay, then maybe what I'll do is I'll just bring the sound effects. Oh, or the UI effects maybe down just a scooch. Let's do that and see how we think, and then we can uh, justify it once more. Hey Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. Hey GM Bull, thanks for the sub. Much appreciated. Okay, music was fine. Good. So let's take out what we've got. Now, one of the things I really like to do in the outliner here, I really like to have the states visible in here. And honestly, at the start of the game, like it defaults to having your commanders on the outliner. I'm like, what do I care about that? <laughs> Disagree. Um, now, it, I don't know if it's practical for everyone to have states over here because some countries have lots of states and things, but, but I like it. It's quite handy to see at a glance what we've got. We start with no unincorporated sounds. Um, and or unincorporated states. I said sounds because I'm looking at the chat. I'm gonna let me know again as we click through here if the UI sounds are still on the high side. Side. Um, everything we've got is incorporated. Our biggest state is Campania, uh, which we are gonna do a lot of great things in. Uh, another important one for us is gonna be Calabria, and the reason Calabria is gonna be important is uh, if uh, unless I'm wrong, and I'm never wrong. That does seem like it's still on the loud side, doesn't it? Um, I believe Calabria is the only place where we can build iron mines. That is indeed the case. And coal mines. Sicily, we've got access to sulfur mines. Logging camps, we've kind of got all over the place. And fishing wharves, wharves make sense. We've got all over the place, too. So if we want any iron, it has to come out of Calabria. So that's going to be nice. Um, but otherwise, Campania is our biggest population center. Let's just check really quick to see if any of these states has a special... Um, uh, thingy. It looks like Sicily does have a 20% boost to its sulfur mines throughput, which is really nice. I mean, it's the only place we can build sulfur mines, but the sulfur mines are going to be that much more useful. Apulia has got Terra Rosa, which is going to give us an agricultural boost. So if we do want to put farming, ideally, we'd like to put it in Apulia. Uh, Calabria has got nothing special and Abruzzo has nothing special either. Uh, so that's kind of our situation. So yeah, we can probably expect a fair, bunch, a fair bit made in Campania just because it's got our population, but this might be the ideal place for us to build our urban buildings um, and really make it the, the sort of capital of our, of our nation here. Um, we're gonna take a look at the specific market to see what's, what inputs are, uh, are short, but also over here, we specifically have a major shortage of paper over here. Now, we might want to start by importing paper, uh, or the other thing we could do is consider producing paper. Let's take a look at what the actual shortages look like. So let's kind of look at one category at a time, sort it by market price. So with our paper, for example, I think if your sell orders, which is the amount of like amount of paper we have access to right now, I think if it's less than half is when it officially puts up the shortage of paper message. I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's when it's under half that you get the shortage message. Um, so we would really like some more paper in our market in some way. Ideally, we could have, we could pull in up to 52 more to meet demand. Um, so we could build a paper factory for that. We currently have 40 that we make. Oh, it looks like it's coming in from trade routes as is. We took a look at a trade routes. Hey Quill, pay attention. There's we are subscribe. currently importing paper from the papal states. Maybe they got maybe they had some extra like blank Bibles that hadn't gotten printed yet. So we're just importing those over here to try to meet our, our demand. But we clearly need more of it. We do have a bunch of available convoys, so we could go and import more paper. So um, let's take a look real quick to see what might be a possibility. We could get. We can get 15 more from a bunch of different places. Now, this is going to cost me some bureaucracy. This is the thing I always forget about with my trade. The paper states, nice. 
Um, I always look at the trade and be like, oh, I've got all these convoys available. And I queue up a billion trade routes. And then I realize, oh, my bureaucracy's got negative. Hold on, I gotta cancel my billion trade routes. I always forget that this costs bureaucracy to do. Uh, so we're gonna have to keep a little eye on this. I don't think there's anything else we need to spend our bureaucracy on right now. So I think spending on this is gonna be okay. So I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna import some paper. Uh, looks like the British market would actually give us some pretty good value here. I think like it's sorted by amount by default. Uh, they, they happen to all be the same over here. Um, so we kind of want to sort by productivity because this is going to be the price of the paper in that market minus the price of the paper in our market and like how much profit we can get from tariffs and stuff. So the paper must be really cheap in Russia. Um, so we do that. Now, Spain, its productivity dropped. And the reason is because we're importing some paper, the price of paper in our market has now dropped. It's less pricey. So our profitability won't be quite the same. Um, if I just do this, we should no longer have the complaint about an actual shortage of paper anymore. I mean, the price is still high, but it's not an officially in a shortage point of view. So maybe we'll just do that for now. Our paper, by the way, is being consumed by our government offices. So that really is money we're paying. It's not, uh, it's not so much that we have like an unproductive economy because some businesses can't get their inputs. It's specifically our government offices, which we pay for that is eating the paper. So if we could bring that price down some more, it actually would be quite good for us. Maybe I'll go ahead and import a second paper after all. Because even if we build a paper thing, it'll take a little while before it gets done. So I'm going to import some paper from Spain. There we go. And so now uh, it's not going to be too bad. It's still it's still on the pricey side, but it's getting a little bit better. That's going to be okay. Paper's being used to print money. So you're playing as two Sicilies, eh? Reverse expedition of the thousand incoming Piemont Sardinia. You think a lot of people are playing uh, Piemont in the game? Like Piemont, Sardinia Piemont? I know a lot of people liked it in, um, in EU4. I don't know what the specific appeal to it was, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, paper's kind of fixed. Let's take a look at what buildings we actually do currently have. First, we're gonna look at a rural setup. We have 12 wheat farms. Now our wheat farms can also, they can choose whether they're focusing on simply producing as much grain as possible, or they can put up citrate orchards, which produce less grain, but increase the production of fruit, sugar, um, fruit and sugar specifically, or we can have vineyards, which, Again, produces less grain than just a single crop, but produces wine. Now, wine's gonna be very uh, Piedmont, yeah, Piedmont, I don't know. Um, wine's gonna be very important for us because as Italians, our Southern Italian culture, which is 100% of what we are currently, they're actually obsessed with wine. This obsession means they want to consume more wine and are willing to pay higher prices for it. So wine's absolutely gonna be a thing that we are going to need to supply our people with. But currently, I believe the grain prices are so much higher. Grain prices are actually fairly high currently. And I think the prediction on our building was if we went to um, if we went to full vineyards here, yeah, the, the, look at the prediction. The price of grain, uh, this these little silver icons give you a kind of an idea about um, the value of the resources. A full stack of silver with a single silver coin on the other side means it's basically average price. If it has more coins, then it's more expensive. If it has fewer coins, then it's it's cheaper. And it does change color at some point. Once the demand gets high enough, it changes the gold coins. If it gets low enough, it changes the copper. So you can see here, if we went full vineyards right now, we'd actually be overproducing wine. The price of wine would drop. And therefore our vineyards wouldn't actually make any money. And on top of that, the price of grain would go up dramatically, which would cause a lot of our people not to be able to feed themselves. So we're not gonna be switching um, to any more vineyards currently. We could consider looking at each individual thing here. Like this allows us, oops, this button lets us change the mode for all of our wheat farms, but we could also change it on a per state basis, which actually right now it's kind of balanced. We've got, um, it's half and half-ish. It's about balanced, actually. Um, some of our wheat farms are also producing wine, and some of them are just focusing completely on grain, which I suspect is actually a pretty good balance. That's not too bad. Uh, livestock ranches, currently, we could upgrade them to butchering tools. It would cost us more money, or rather, it would cost those businesses a lot more money. The reason for it is we don't really have a tool input. Right now, tools are perfectly fine average price, but um, if we put in a demand here, all of a sudden, we'd need 70 more tools in our market, and we do not have that. Um, if we take a look right now, we actually have a slight surplus of tools, but only 20 extra, so we'd actually be 50 short. So we'd either have to import more tools or start our own field, um, 
tool factories. So two possible industries have kind of been indicated now that we might want to look into. Paper could be a thing, tools could be a thing. Now, if we tried to build a tool factory right now, it would probably tell us, hey, this isn't actually going to be very profitable, right? If I click on tooling workshops, it'd be like, why would you want to build this? You're just going to lose money. But that's, we know that we can easily create a massive demand for tools by changing our modes on at least our butcher shop, if not other things. So I think if we built a tool factory, it would be insanely profitable. So that's something else we could consider building. Um, we have we have some sulfur mines. We have 15 sulfur mines already in Sicily. I suspect the price of sulfur is not that high right now. Yeah, it's slightly below baseline currently, but um, a lot of things will start to consume sulfur as the game goes on. And there aren't that many sulfur mines throughout the world. There is a way, is it here? If I click on sulfur, there you go. All these green blobs, these are the places where sulfur is available in the world. So there's not that many spots currently. And I think the darkness of it represents how much it's, uh, is that how much it can support or the amount it is producing? Well, actually a hundred sulfur mines. I think this, I actually think Sicily might be the state, the one state in the world that has the most potential for sulfur production. So. That's interesting, um, and I think that'll be more relevant. Yes, the paper mills can use sulfur. One of the upgrades to paper mills can use sulfur, and then the other thing you can do is use it for making explosives and various things like that. <laughs> oh. It's currently showing potentials on the map. We could also have it, yeah, for production. So you can see these places could produce sulfur, but they currently don't. We can, we can do that. So yeah, we have the highest potential, and we'll almost certainly we have the highest driver. production, or very close to it. Uh, it's possible that Cornwall, or West Country, sorry. Oh no, they only have six sulfur mines. So yeah, we are uh, we are going to be pretty set up for there, but I don't think there's that much demand for sulfur right now. We almost may have to create it. Hey, Infinite G, thanks for the resub. 99 problems, my sub ain't one. Nice. Um, we have a we have silk plantations, interestingly enough, which. I hadn't actually expected as a thing, but that's kind of interesting. Some logging camps and we can build more, and some fishing wars and we can build more. We do have a tooling workshop already. Um, it is currently on the more aggressive mode that we can do. So, yeah, I think we can probably, so the, new, the good news is if we did hey, change our, our cattle farms to use tools right away, it would increase the profitability of tooling workshops, although, um, the cattle farms, I don't think we'd have access to enough tools. So we might want to build one more tooling workshop and then upgrade our cattle farms. I kind of like that plan. We could cut back on our paper usage if we downgraded our government administration to simple organization, but I don't think we want to do that. So I think I kind of like that. Currently we're turning a pretty big profit. I think first of all, we can afford to support another construction sector. So um, I do think we're gonna build a fair amount of industrial stuff in Campania. So I'm gonna build another one there for now. Um, oh, we hadn't actually changed over to iron frame buildings. Okay, if I do that, we are gonna buy more stuff and it is gonna ratchet up the price of the iron pretty quickly. But I think that's okay. We may need to build an iron mine ASAP to bring the construction sector cost back in line. In terms of production, I think I'm gonna research intensive agriculture first. And the reason for that is I think we've got it, we're gonna have a decent amount of um, farms and the cattle ranches that will benefit pretty well from intensive agriculture ASAP. So I think we're gonna go ahead and start with that. And those of you in chat, if people ask questions about our Canada Let's Play, um, if you guys could just let people know that the video for that is gonna be available tomorrow. Uh, just because of the embargo, I can't couldn't post another YouTube video today. You look how difficult it is to change from state religion to freedom of conscience. So it's going to depend a lot on who we have in our government, right? So currently, yeah, with, we got the state religion. We are officially Catholic. Um, and currently, we couldn't push the freedom of conscience because we don't have a party in government that supports it. Um, the intelligentsia, 
would be super in favor of this. So if we move the intelligentsia into government, we could probably make that move. Right now, it's just the landowners in government. They don't tend to have a lot of very progressive uh, law interests. Um, it, I would really like, I'm happy we started with per capita taxation instead of land-based, which we did in Canada. This is gonna make us more money. Hopefully we can unlock, uh, uh, what is this, egalitarianism or even socialism soon and get some even more powerful tax things. But there's probably gonna be a limit to how quickly we can go. I would love to get some schools up. I would love to get some basic healthcare up, which right now in the short term, you know, we could stay 100% hardcore Catholic for a long time. We could really make sure everyone's being converted to this. I mean, I suspect the religious people are gonna be pretty powerful. Oh, we got an inefficient agriculture event. Option one does give us more migration attraction. Now, I think right now, migration is mostly gonna be internal. So I don't think it's as useful um, as it would be in Canada, for example. I don't think I'm gonna give the industrialists a minus one though. A little bit of radicalism is not the end of the world. I think that's gonna be okay. <laughs> You know that PDX tomorrow starts at midnight CET. Um, it's not. It's actually um, for the embargo. It's uh, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon uh, Eastern, 1800 Central European time. Those are going to be times currently. Okay. Yeah, we're not terribly rich. Okay, nothing else in construction. Hold on. Let's go with the plan. Actually, you know what I'm thinking? We might... We might need... So I think the iron price is going to go up while we're constructing, which is also going to impact tools. We might want some more iron mines. But I think first, I'm going to go ahead with the plan of building an extra tooling workshop. And we're going to put in Campania over here. And yeah, it thinks it's going to lose money, but we're going to be increasing the cost of tools really quickly here. As soon as this is built, I think we're going to queue up some more. Now, I suspect these guys are going to... I think they need iron as an input right now with their tools let's go and see tooling hey, workshop new campania new subs yeah we're taking wooden iron and iron's very pricey so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to increase our iron mines or actually build any iron mines whatsoever in hey, calabria oh my god so many new subs thank you mm -hmm. oh that's vordian gifting subs yeah when I, I still have it screwed up when someone gives a single sub it lists it wrong so sorry about that do 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 Check their Twitter. I, I guess I should, I could double check the Twitter, but the email I have with the embargo list has that. Maybe things have been justified since then. But yeah, I think 6 p.m. Central Eastern, at least that's what I have in my email. So that's why I'm making part two of my Canada Let's Play Live. Yeah, we don't have enough taxation capacity. This is something I didn't have to deal with in Canada because I had such low population, but we actually don't have enough government offices to be able to collect all of our taxes. Although we are collecting most of them, which at least is nice. Any suggestion for starter nations? Uh, I did do a test as Brazil. Brazil's really fun to start as. Um, I really think Canada's a great start. I know some of the devs talked about Greece being a cool place because it's got kind of a fresh cart kind of vibe. And honestly, I think Two Sicilies is going to be a great pick for that. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we're uh, we're deficit spending right now, but that's fine because it's just our construction costs that are sending us into deficit. If we weren't building, we'd actually be turning a huge profit. And in fact, um, if we made tools cheaper, which we're working on, and iron cheaper, then the construction will get cheaper. I suspect when we're kind of done this, we might be able to build even more construction sectors after this one. So we'll see. Yeah, this game doesn't have mana. These things are just capacity. Hey, Quill, Actually, I should, I should probably spend subscriber. some authority here. More subs. Dusky, thanks for the sub. Welcome to the party. Um, we could run some consumption taxes. They're actually a pretty good way to spend our, um, our authority. Don't want to tax grain. Liquor, hey, let's tax liquor. It's only gonna cost me 100 authority. It's gonna make us tons of money. No, we're not taxing wine, just hard liquors. Drink more wine, it's gonna be fine. We could tax wine as well though. The services are gonna be a pretty good um, ratio, but I think a lot of people depend on the services so that might, might make our standard living drop a little bit too much. We'll just tax liquor. We'll leave the wine as is. How about that? I'll, I won't do anything else. It's not like our income bad. Actually, we're turning a profit again here, uh, despite the fact that we are building, which that whenever I'm building and I'm turning a profit, that's going to be an indicator that I should consider building another construction thing because we can do that. I haven't even cut wages or anything like that. So yeah, we've got tons of money sitting around. I think I am going to queue it. I'm going to queue um, in Calabria. I'm going to go ahead and queue one construction building there. I'm going to... Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll put it at the top. They build really fast. 
So wherever you have a construction industry, you do get a slight boost to your construction efficiency. So I'm going to want more than Campania because it's my most populated province and we're probably going to build a bunch, but we know we're going to be building a decent amount of Calabria as well with the mining. So I think that's going to be okay. I can increase wages to the government and military. And what this will do, the other thing I really like to have in the outliner is the interest groups. Hey Quill, pay attention. Another, another shout out, by the way, if you don't know, you can change in settings under um under graphics you can change the gui scaling for you you'll probably um if you're assuming you've got a decent size screen you'll probably want to play at like 80 percent scaling plus or minus but i'm keeping it at max scaling here so that you guys can see it if you're watching on your phone or something but it lets you put a lot more in your screen at once 80 percent club says alistorn hey, hey, that was actually a pro tip progress. from alistorn who as a reminder is is one of the paradox devs he's one of the people you've seen in the paradox dreams and who's written the dev diaries or some of the dev diaries a bunch of people have written them can you invade the Papal States? <laughs> we could, potentially. Um, uh, right now, we are two good friends with them. So if we wanted to make a diplomatic play to conquer, it'll say we can't because our relationship is too high. Uh, currently, no one is guaranteed to join either side, but there's a good chance someone would intervene. I, I just suspect it's much too likely that someone would intervene here. Um, but yeah, we can we can peacefully bring them in, uh, assuming we can bring them into our customs union, which hopefully we'll be able to do with some of our neighbors relatively soon. So we'll see. So landlords like us a lot. Oh, I want to spend the rest of my autonomy on some extra points here. Oh, we got a lot of shortages. So in each state, what are they most producing okay there's a lot of industry in here although yeah they have a critical shortage of iron and iron we have to get those iron mines up and then the, the construction i suppose is not helping for that but that's going to be okay um i guess you do have agriculture now we could improve the flow through that but no i think my capital i'm going to encourage manufacturing in my capital uh sicily i probably will want to boost the uh, resources for the iron mines um i guess i could do that now because it's still going to help with the fishing wharves so we'll go resources Apulia here, yeah, is, well, we'll go and encourage agriculture for now. Because you can only encourage one industry in each place. And the Bruzzo, there's really nothing to really focus on one way or another. Um, what about down in Sicily? Oh, yeah, sulfur mines. Not that sulfur is that valuable yet, but I suppose I'll go and encourage the resource industry now. Just because I may as well spend the authority. Uh, Cloud Prism, I think if you refresh, you should not get the bio tech uh, stream title sometimes twitch doesn't just stops updating your particular view okay we're now starting to build iron mines which i think we desperately desperately need since everything's got a shortage of freaking iron right now and it is making my construction much more expensive especially since we're probably not pollute producing enough tools you showcase the devout in the oh interest group oh so the devouts in our case are called the catholic church um so if you make them mad they have the pious fiction trait, which lowers education access. If you're, if they're a little happy, divine right gives us more authority. And if they're very happy, they increase our birth rate. Keep in mind, if they get to the point where they are powerful, which apparently that the clout number for that depends maybe on how many interest groups you have active, but it's going to be around 20%, maybe a little under 20%. If they're powerful, all these numbers double. Because mm -hmm. you switched to pie charts. Uh, you don't like the number charts? We'll see. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. All right. Getting that iron going. Once you get these iron mines, the construction will become cheaper, which will probably make it that much easier for us to build a little bit more hey, Quill, construction stuff as well. So many new subs. Thank you so much. We got D. Karen and San Alfato. A lot of people reminding, remembering their Twitch Prime button. Again, Twitch does not like to remind you to use your Twitch Prime, but it really is quite handy. So if you can remember to do that, that's great. Cost you nothing. Pay attention, there's a new subscriber. Pie charts are an abomination. Oh, we're going to get those wars. Da, da, da. Who's that? Lightning? Lightning Roger. Hey, thanks for the sub. Oh, we're going to have hey, Canadian cool. Grim Reaper as well. Dog3220. Angry Corgi. Oh, now that's a good name. No offense to anyone else, but Angry Corgi. It just sounds so adorable. It's like, I don't know if anyone hey, watches cool. The Owl House, but you know when subscriber. King gets mad and he's got that squee? Yeah, that, that an Angry Corgi kind of makes me think of that. All right, we're almost besties with uh, with Tuscany, which hey, is Quill, nice. Pay attention, there's a new subscriber. I don't know if that's going to open up anything. We will see. But yeah, if we can get bring some people into our custom union, that's going to be interesting. But right now, we're just going to have to try to build up our, our personal economy in the best possible way. So we still have an iron shortage. 
Well, these iron mines, they have to, you know, they have to get new people to come into them. But there you go. It's happening. Okay, cool. Yeah. Iron is still super valuable. I think as long as soon as I stop constructing, iron prices normalize. Um, which means if I'm not actively constructing, the, the iron mines might have a little bit of a financial okay, cool. problem. But in subscriber. theory, oh my god, Space Velociraptor! Oh god, so many good names. Random John! Sky High, thank you very much. Um, as long as we continue okay, cool. to construct, and our goal is certainly to be constructing basically all the time, because that means we're growing our economy, unless we run out of, like, peasants to work for us, these iron mines should be fairly profitable. And we are, we can always compensate for them being less profitable by trying to export iron places or build more things that use iron, uh, like tools for one, but I think an arms industry, which might be super valuable, um, that might be another good way to do it. And of course, they can become more efficient with better production methods as well. So right now, I don't see, I, I suspect, let's go up to like five iron mines. I suspect we're going to be able to put them hey, to Quill, good use. So I'm going to keep going with those. That's going to be great. Oh, is auto expand something you recommend? So, I mean, I think it comes down to like everything in every game. Hey, Quill, pay attention. Doing subscriber. it manually is better because you're probably going to make slightly smarter decisions. But the auto expand is actually pretty darn safe. The, if you click this on, what's going to happen is the industry will automatically queue up um, a request to uh, get another level to expand itself as long as it is fully employed and has full cash reserves, i.e. We're not short on workers and we've clearly been making money. So our business is profitable. So keep auto expanding. I think this is going to be very valuable in large nations or if you're focusing on something like warfare or something like that. Um, theoretically, it could expand to the point where you, you have literally run out of workers somewhere or something like that, and now the latest expansion wasn't enough. That's probably not the issue. I think mostly with the auto expand is I'm mostly going to try to leave it off just because I might want to make sure something else is building first. Now, it only queues the auto expansion stuff if, um, if there's not too much in the queue. It's pretty smart about that, and I think it, it looks at like... Um, how, like your your overall capacity, and then it starts to queue a few things up when you're going to have room for more things. Okay, so we no longer have the shortage of iron. Let's take a look at our market. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. Oh my God, so many more people. We got a person nuova. Wait, what was that? That sounded Italian. It sounded Italian. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. A person nuova. Well, to that, let me say. Buongiorno. <laughs> uh, we've also got moon landing and quixotic nonsense and mini wiener and Ab abel cakes all king thank you very much for all that welcome and buongiorno <laughs> oh hold on i gotta scroll it oh, don't scroll the view i'm trying to read text chat dun, 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 dun. i'll expand it smart or dumb smart smart dumb or dumb smart <laughs> Yeah, it's probably great for railroads, actually. That's probably a good a good indicator. Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So yeah, there's still we still have tons of requests for iron. I mean, 400 things want to buy it. The construction sector. Okay, half it is the construction sector. So we can see right now, if I'm not constructing, all of a sudden we're slightly overproducing iron, and especially since we're still building some more iron mines. But again, I'll probably be consuming this, and if anything, I'm probably going to want to build more tooling workshops. So I'm happy about the extras we've got in there. But yeah, we might want to look at something else. Again, paper is still a little expensive. Do we want to get into the paper making business? I think, I think I kind of do. So I'm going to build a paper mill. I think I'm going to build it in Campania here because it is a a big. Um, I think we are going to make this as a heavy industrialized area. It predicts that we're going to lose money, but that's because, okay, the paper costs will go down, uh, but it's going to be tight. And I think we're going to, we're going to be building more government offices pretty quickly that will consume more paper. Oh, and duh, right now we're importing paper. If we build this and then cancel one of our import trade routes, then this thing's going to be making huge, huge amounts of money. Paper making business so we can rival the paper states and sell Pope hates, Pope hats to the rest of the world. Uh -huh. All right, iron mines are continuing to go. Now we've got paper mills coming in. That's gonna be lovely. Uh, okay, we have finished improving people to plus 50, which we've got why we've got some extra room for our improved relations. Now, what I'd like is hey, Quill, pay attention customs to unit. Now, join customs unit is we are asking to join someone else's customs union, which isn't what we wanna do. We wanna have people join ours. Yeah, right now, no one's into it. Uh, we don't get a total number here, do we? 
I don't, know, I don't have to do math. It feels like Tuscany may be kind of close. Now, if I actually go to Tuscany itself and, um, yeah, go to Diplomacy, which you can also, I could have right-clicked over here, Open Diplomacy. I guess I already had it open. Um, or Interactions, rather. If I go change to our customs, oh, you don't, um, invite to customs, there we go. Do we get the actual map? Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's new there we go, minus 42. It'd be so much more convenient. So if my GDP grows, they're more likely to join in. Um, ooh, ideological differences, interesting. But also if we have more trade, so theoretically if we're doing a bunch of import export with them specifically, then they might be more willing to join in. We could do something like, what if we formed an alliance with them? Let's find out. Oh, what's their government? That's a great question. So their government is an absolute duchy and we're an absolute monarchy. I mean, how different is that really? Wouldn't it be better to join a larger custom unit and exploit that market? Well, a couple of things. I don't want to join a larger market in this game because that's what's happening in the Canadian run. And yeah, it's working beautifully to us there, but I want to try something different. Secondly, I have specific things where I want, um, I want the Italian miners to be part of my customs union so that we can unify into into Italy. Um, so that'll be that'll be quite fun. Okay, urbanize. You know what? I don't have to mark that. That's gonna happen eventually, no matter what. Patronize romanticism. So we need a level two arts academy. You know, that wouldn't necessarily be a terrible thing to do early on. I'll put a little pin in there to remember it. Uh, and this here, oh, um, religion, autocracy, nationality. This is gonna auto-complete in 30 years, as long as we don't stop being a monarchy and we don't change state religion, don't change autocracy, and don't have a civil war, then this will trigger an event. I don't know what official nationality does, but it'll trigger it. So maybe, I don't know. This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them, two Sicilies, exactly. Alliance accepted. No, that didn't seem to make a direct influence over here, but it should keep our reputations, our moods a little higher. So we'll see. Make your culture Italian. Well, my culture's already, well, South Italian. Story two Sicily's fasting. I actually don't know it. All right, paper mill is being made. Oh, are we complaining about iron shortages again? Really? Oh yeah. Our production dipped down. Would our trade route go away? I wonder. Speaking of trade route, we could do some more of it. Let's import, um, we do produce our own silk. We could produce more of it. Maybe I don't need to import that. Maybe actually I should just see if I can export some sulfur. Whoa, Belgium wants sulfur. Excellent, let's absolutely do that. That'll be a good good profitability thing. And we'll boost the value of sulfur within our, um, within our, what you may call it, trade zone. Uh, so yeah, lots of export demand. We could export some to Tuscany, which actually I should do. I should really look to see whatever, what else, whatever, anything I can ever do with Tuscany. There's also a lot of demand for liquor. It's like, is Tuscany in here? I mean, over here, but we'd be losing money. Um, Egypt, of course, is well known for its liquor. Let's go ahead and pull that in. Um, clothes. Papal market. Well, let's do that because then, you know, we'll get some internal trade. We'll buy some of those cool Pope hats. Some of those cool Pape hats. We could take a look at our iron mines and see if there's a problem with our iron mines. I think not. They're still very profitable. They're, they've just reached full employment. It's just a sign that, hey, we can, we can afford to build more. I am consuming a lot of iron with my construction industry. But yeah, we can build that. In fact, I can probably just double the amount of uh, iron mines I've got. What well, might be less of a thing once we develop some tech. We're currently researching intensive agriculture, which I really like as a first tech in virtually every country. It boosts both your farms and your ranches and increases more um, interaction between them because it makes your um, it makes your ranchers produce fertilizer and it makes your farms want fertilizer and your ranchers want to eat more grain, which your farms are producing more grain. So they just like 
levels up everything under the kind of agricultural title, which is fantastic. So yeah, build these. That's great. Yeah, we'll have to build. Yeah, Campania especially is going to need some more government offices. That I, I really do want a little bit of paper set up before that happens. We may need to just import more paper. But for now, we'll go ahead and build the paper mill, and we'll take a look at our numbers afterwards. Yeah, Malta is owned by British. It is, um... Yeah, it's actually owned by Great Britain. It's not its own thing that's a puppet or anything like that. It's actually part of Great Britain proper. How's Canada doing without my guidance? I'm curious to see actually how the colonization is going to go here. When uh, I recorded my Canada videos, I was on patch 1.0.2, one of the pre-release ones. Uh, we are currently on 0 0.3. Uh, and I don't know, because these are all pre-release patches, there were no patch notes. Actually, learn the game on 0 0.0.1, recorded on 0 0.0.2, and now we're on 0 0.0.3. I have no idea what's different between them. I can tell you there was a difference in the colonial balance between 0.1 and 0.2, but I don't know the current state. So I'm gonna, it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. British. Paper mill as opposed to Pope mill. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're losing a tiny bit of money. Pfft, that's fine. That's actually ridiculous. We have so much money stared up. Part of me is like, we could do more construction, but I think I'll wait until we get more iron mines just because I don't want to like devour all the iron away from our tools factories. So yeah, I'm not going to queue up more construction sectors. I could go and change us to just wooden frame buildings, which won't consume any iron. But you can see the iron price, pay the iron price, will go from like stacks of gold to a single little copper thing. If we're not constructing, our iron industry is going to collapse. Can you show Central America? See, I want to see if I can play my country, Costa Rica. So, ooh, hold on. Right here. Uh, we do have Costa Rica, so that's playable. Then there's just currently this Central America nation in Guatemala. And then we got bits of Britain, the M Mosquito Kingdom. And then New Granada includes, you know, this area over here. Probably this is how it starts. We haven't gone that, well, we are two years into the game. Maybe some things have shifted from the actual start. I don't know. I see what the situation, I mean, that's true. Why aren't we playing as air? You are a hundred percent right. I wasn't even thinking of that. We should have played as air. Oh, it's a decentralized power. Actually, I'm not sure that you can play as a decentralized power. Yeah, our AI controlled, not playable by humans. Decentralized powers are things that you colonize instead. It's one of those, do you have a flag situations? Okay. Iron mines coming up. Yeah, so these are, as long as we're constructing, they're gonna be super, super valuable. So we finished our paper. Let's take a quick look at the market situation um, with paper here under staple goods okay so we still have a shortage definitely not as dire as before and the prices are still good enough that in theory our paper mills should be profitable yeah you know what? i haven't even changed the paper price and it's there so i don't know if um alistorn can weigh in here but so when i go to industries um and i try to build like a paper mill see it's telling me it's unprofitable and my assumption here is i think the we the wages are correct and I think the wood prices are correct. I suspect hey, it's hey, um, being... Uh, oh, Alistair, are you leaving? No. I, I suspect it's being too conservative with its estimation of sales. Because it told us we were going to lose money on this paper mill. And the paper mill that we built is, huge, is turning a huge profit. And that's without even full employment or anything like that. And it tells us if we're going to upgrade this, it's going to lose more money. I don't believe that's true. It doesn't seem to matter, like, the, with the price change or anything like that. Yeah, you want to tinker with that prediction. Yeah. So, I, my thing is just to tell people, when you're on the building thing, and it's telling you, like, it's telling us right now... See, silk plantations would tell us it would lose money. I don't think that's the case either. Silk is very expensive right now. I think it's underestimating how much profit it's going to make from actually selling the silk. So, just because you see a negative number there, you have to, like... You have to use the force. Trust yourself to be like, no, I think that is actually going to be profitable. I think it's just worst case scenario meaning certain things. Our arms industry is actually losing money right now. It doesn't help that iron is super expensive. And maybe not enough people are at war. So we'll see. You know if you can release a vassal and start playing with it? That is something I do not know. Turn off your targeting computer. 
Okay, oh, uh, unused. Okay, yeah, that's just a little rounding error. Iron's still expensive. Steel, or tools are also expensive. More taxation. Now, I think... Well, I still don't really want to build another tool factory until our iron's gotten a little bit better off. It's closing in, though. But yeah, right now, I think con continuing to construct iron mine continues to be kind of a no-brainer. We still have a couple in the queue, but I think we can assume that we're going to do more. So, Calabria here, pop a couple more in there for me, please. Thank you. Can you do a start treaty port, even if you don't have colonial laws? Um, I think so. Like, if we weren't... If, if, if Tunis was in my area, I think I could. Because, I mean, theoretically, I can do it against these guys as well. Uh, so I can't do Tunis because I have no interest in the area. I have to change my interest. But, like, I mean, obviously we wouldn't be colonizing Albania, but I can still ask them for a treaty port. Okay, that's actually something... Hmm. Is that something valuable? Because treaty port gives you, what, access to someone's market's goods? Like, and it's a one-way thing. Like, we have access to, like, buy and sell to them at will, but they don't really have it the other way around. Maybe that would be a great way to expand some of our market stuff. But yeah, the thing I really want to do, just to avoid, uh, improve our, or to advance towards unifying um, Italy, is we want to get these people into our markets. Yeah, papal attitude towards us is cautious. That's too bad. It'd be nice if that could be changed. I guess because we're neighbors? Listen, the pape. Why are you cautious towards me? Unknown factor. Relevant. Friend or enemy. Well, I suppose... If we form... Oh, they don't want to do a defense pact? Really? Strategy of defend borders. Hmm. You don't want a trade agreement either. How do we make the pape like us more over in the papal states? Maybe they don't like that I'm friends with Tuscany. That's possible. Yep. I'm going to be totally friends with Italy as much as possible. Maybe we'll have to war the Papal States. Maybe they don't want to be part of this. Invade them through the front. Yeah, we'll just make them friends by force. Look, we're turning a profit again. So that tells me we could build more construction districts. Even though we're still paying crazy amounts for tools and iron. That's nuts. I mean, we could lower taxes, but... Pfft. No, no, baby. I'm a tax and spend kind of guy. Quill, I'm the Pope now. Look at me. Look at me. I'm the Pope now. Hmm. I could go and ruin our relationships with Rome. Ooh, banking unlocked. More minting. Reduced loan interest. Lathe is unlocked. Uh, we probably have some places that can use it. Actually, we haven't looked at our building mode since we started the game, and a lunch of the violence has changed. Okay, we can't do dye workshops here because dyes, we don't, we don't have, we could, we'd have to import dyes. We could consider it. But here we go. We can get late. Sorry, we can get lays at the furniture manufacturer. Um, it'll be about break even, but they'll, this will become much more profitable as we produce more tools. And hardwood's too expensive right now. We may need to change our uh, our modes. Sometimes you get in a situation where... So it would look like luxury furniture is not profitable because hardwood is too expensive. And then if I look at rural, it might look like... With our logging camps... Okay, it's not the case. But it might look like... Oh, oh switching to hardwood's not profitable, right? Because right now there's no demand on hardwood. And right now there's no production on hard hardwood. So everything looks bad. But if you were to be like, okay, well, I'm going to change my furniture... And I'm going to change my logging, and then all of a sudden it all works out. So I think it's a sign that we actually need some more logging camps so we can make our tool or furniture workshop a little bit better, but we'll see. Um, glass? Yeah, lead, we don't have... We, we'd have to import some lead to increase that. We may want to, I don't know. And importing dyes. If we did import dyes... Both our textile mills and our glass works could get a bit of a level up. Let's see the dye situation. So right now, these would be unprofitable just because the price of dye in my market would, well, would actually crash. 
you can see here the um, the market the price in British markets is 24 and will stay about 24 go up to about 25 and the price in Sicily's market in us will drop down to 10 which makes it look terrible but if we did bring this in so that we have 10 dimes we can switch here oh, to the die workshop <sighs> In this case, it does want 25 dies. We'd have to import more. What about the glassworks? I don't think they need it as much. Yeah, 15 more dies. So I think we can make this change, and I think it'll kind of work itself out. Uh, what category is die under? Is it just a luxury good by itself? Hey, well. Oh, there it is. Currently 14 and 14, so balance price. I think that's pretty good. Oh, I could, and that's the thing. I could switch only some of the clothing places to use dyes. I'm gonna switch all the um, the ceramics, but yeah, I could do like some. It is per state though. Like if I look at my clothing, uh, uh, yeah, it was clothing, right? If I look at this, I, 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 I have no choice but to switch everything over to dye because it's everything per state. So all of Campania would switch to dyes. If I had textile mills in different places, then I could do sort of half and half and stuff, but not in this case. Yeah, it's one mill of size five is basically the way it is. Mm -hmm. Paddle streamer. Hey, now. I mean, only in private. I mean, what? I mean. Bonjour. Okay. I can't believe that was much money we're doing. Okay, rather than increase my construction sector as a way to sink some money, maybe the thing to do right now is to take this opportunity and develop our uh, government stuff. Because right now we have a taxation capacity shortage in three of the states. The biggest one being Campania. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the government administration in Campania. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. This will give us... It'll give us two things. It'll give us more infrastructure, which currently we're okay on, but it'll also give us more taxation capacity. We'll consume more paper, but we can keep balancing that, so that's going to be okay. Um, New subscriber, which I missed. Uh, Perpilo, thanks for joining. Someone's asking about the icon in uh, for the landowners. This one here, the orange one, this shows that they're in government. So they're actually the only people in government. And currently, I don't have elections. Um, I actually don't know if it says it anywhere. Like, I mean, it's sort of implied by the changes. Like, we're a monarchy right now, so no, I guess there's no elections, but yeah. Subscriber. Now, I can still form the government out of whatever group, and if I want to pass certain laws, I might want to bring them into government. Like, I actually might really want to bring the industrialist in. Like, should we look maybe at a change somewhere? I would love to get some education started, for example. So, I, I might actually be okay with just being like a singular, like, yeah, keep Catholicism as a state religion kind of vibe. The, um, the, the devout interest group, which in this case for us is called the Catholic Church. This gets like renamed depending on your nation um, or your, your state religion, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, our devout interest group here. There are some things that they are in favor of that we would also like. And there's a lot of stuff that they're probably not. Um, I actually might prefer public school, private schools rather, um, because it does suck that the education access is wealth-based, but it boosts the intelligentsia, which might be very powerful for us. Public schools uh, just give everyone the same educa education access. Right now, we don't have any support for any of them. We would need to push public schools. We need intelligentsia, trade unions, or industrialists in government. For private schools, we need industrialists or intelligentsia, or trade unions actually, would all support it. So we could look to make a bit of a change here. Like, I was going to say, we'll lose a little bit of legitimacy, but not much. It'd be great to even bring in the intelligentsia. Oh, that drops our legitimacy too much. If I just pull the industrialists in here, I think this is going to give us a few more interesting options hey, Quill, with our law changes. Subscriber. So we're going to do that. Yeah, my boy. Thank you. And I'm very sorry if I'm missing anyone. I, I do want to acknowledge everyone, but I also have to focus on playing the game, or what's the point? Um, oh, that's interesting. Oh, I don't actually have... Oh, I need to break state and law or state religion to be able to run these. I could run religious schools. I mean, that does give education to all. It makes the Catholic Church more powerful. You know what? 
Let's just commit. Let's just let's just go and be like hardcore Catholic Church state. So we don't have a great chance of pushing this because it's only industrialist right now. Could I bring the religious into here? Yeah, that 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 breaks our legitimacy too much. All right, religious schools. Let's go. So we're gonna start running that, and we'll see what happens. We have a lot of uh, unspent authority, so our enactment time is actually gonna be boosted quite a bit. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, you've never heard of Victoria at all, Ignacio? Uh, or Ig Ig. Is he not Gito? I'm really sorry. I can't read your name. Um, Buongiorno. I'm just going to keep that around whenever I can't pronounce something right. Uh, Victoria 3 is a grand strategy game by Paradox. It is very ec econom economically focused. It's really about that as a primary thing and politics. There is warfare, but yeah. <laughs> Going hardcore Catholic than taking over the Papal States by force. I see no potential problems, right? It's just because we're the best Catholics. That's all. That's what we're going to be. We're going to be the best Catholics or something, or maybe the worst. I don't know. So we've completed intensive agriculture. This is going to be, this is great. I, that, uh, to me, that's such a great tech for basically everyone. Hey, so we can switch our wheat farms. Forms? Hey, auto speed. Thanks for the sub. We're going to switch our farms from simple farming to soil enriching farming. So this dramatically increases our grain output while consuming more fertilizer. Now, okay. This is gonna tank the price of grain because we're gonna go from slightly above average grain prices to non-existent grain prices. Maybe we don't wanna do this yet. Also fertilizer becomes incredibly expensive. But the other thing it does is it unlocks for livestock ranches from simple ranching to intensive. With intensive, this is gonna increase our grain production, which actually is gonna make it super expensive. But as it turns out, the grazing ranch will still be turning a profit even though it's actually going to be tanking the price of fabric and fertilizer. But if we do this and increase the grain consumption by 140 and produce more fertilizer, our enriched farms, cell enriching farms here, I think might be okay. Actually, it is predicting that they'll make a profit. You can see over here. So we're going to do that. Now, I kind of feel... Wow, we still don't have enough wine consumption to switch our vineyards over. We're doing about half and half with vineyards. Okay, but that should be okay. And it does update those numbers pretty darn fast. Oh, we need a new tech. Improved fertilizer is also excellent, but uh, I think we'll wait on that. Um, atmospheric engine gives us a pretty massive boost to our mines. Consumes more tool, consumes more coal. Wait, do we have native coal production? Oh, we do. Calabria can also have coal mines. Excellent. Okay. So that's not a bad idea. It does increase the workers at a mine because then we need machinists and laborers. Um, but it does output a lot more goods, which is kind of nice. Mechanical tools, which we are already progressing towards, is actually kind of nice as well. We can unlock steel tools that are tooling workshops, but we don't really have a lot of steel access right now. Even importing steel, steel I think, would be kind of difficult. Sulfite pulping for our paper mills, though. This means we are going to consume sulfur at our paper mills and produce a ton more paper, which would be amazing for us right now. Uh, precision tools for the furniture manufacturer would probably be okay. And then mechanized workshops... Yeah, I think we're going to get me mechanical tools right now. I think that's going to be really helpful. <laughs> Have you mentioned how doing T3 text before all T2 text creates a malice? No, I didn't. So, there is a cost that goes up. Now, here I don't really see it because, like, so Bessemer process and nitroglycerin both have the same cost. But if we look, oh, these are, these, this is still tier two. There you go. These are tier three and there are a lot more expensive. Look at 13 years, 13 years. So yeah, so I don't know. Do you need to get all the tier two before you go to the tier threes or is it like half? I actually wasn't, I knew there was an increased cost but I don't know what determines how it works. So like Hoi 4, there's not a particular date for it. The, oh, the intelligentsia expressed their concerns about government decision clearly favoring the interest of the industrialists. Well, I actually want to be friends with both. Okay, the industrialists absolutely love me right now. They're at a plus 14. Now, a big part of that is because they are super happy that I'm pushing in schools. Industrialists want smart people for their businesses. But I can afford to take a two-point hit with the industrialists right now. They'd still be super thrilled and would still be giving me their full bonus. So right now we're getting a discount to technology costs. 
and an increase to how much uh, capitalists are investing towards our businesses, which is wonderful. The Catholic Church is also super happy with us. We get a bonus to authority, and we get a bonus to birth rate. So I'm going to hit this needs to be addressed, which will slightly upset the industrialists, but they're still going to be in love with me. And the intelligentsia boost is going to be very useful um, long term. Like, we can get a society boost. We can get the propagandists. I don't know if the intelligentsia are going to love us if we're staying pretty religious, but we'll see. Iron and tools is still expensive, but we're working on it. Right, I'm going to get the extra government building Campania so we get more taxes. Keegers, thanks for subbing. The percent, this is, shows their relative clout. So compared to each other. So the landlords are the most powerful group right now. And so on. And anyone below, um, it slightly depends on things, but anyone below about 5% will become marginalized. So trade unions are currently marginalized. So it doesn't matter if they're happy or really mad. They currently do nothing. But trade union um, membership is going to grow as we industrialize more and more over here. Oh, okay. This is pretty good. Um, so our industrialists want to make investments in neighboring papal industries. I think we get, I don't know if we get this all the time or just because the industrialists are in government. Um, but yeah, so we can use this to boost relations with the papal states. It will give the papal states a manufacturing bonus. Or I can say no, 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 which will piss off the industrialists, but give me the manufacturing tax income. This is really tempting, but I don't want to upset the industrialists anymore. And I do kind of want to be friends with the papal states, although I don't know how much it's actually going to matter for anything we're trying to do here because they still don't want to join the customs unit oh there's the minus 77 yeah which is a which is a damn shame oh i need more influence sitting around to be able to do that to do. Right now, we're spending our influence just sucking up to people, which is fine. Don't mind that. Let's boost that some more. Do, 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 do. The speed, rather. It's Corfu independent. Corfu is here? 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 I don't know. It's somewhere. <laughs> oh, there. Um, Is it? Oh, it's part of something called the Ionian Islands. So, Corfu itself isn't a thing, but the Ionian Islands... Oh, they're a protected protectorate of Great Britain, so no, they're super not independent. If you develop your provinces with new little city models pop up... Yeah, you get a bunch of stuff! Um, as urban urbanization increases, you get, um, you get, like, the buildings expand. I think some of the industries show up as well. Um, I know rail does too. I like the little roads here. I mean, I don't, I don't play zoomed out very often, and I, but I should because look, or I don't play zoomed in very often. But look how gorgeous you get these like roads here. Yeah, I think there's a lot of dynamic map changes. These are big birds. Yeah, very terrifying birds. You down one of them, you feed your entire city for a week. All right. What did I get for? Pausing. I'm like, why aren't these done yet? Barracks pop up. The terror birds. Rock seagulls. Yeah. Oh my god. We're making we're making all this money. I don't need this money. What's the red alert at the top? Uh, this is letting us know we're going to have a bureaucratic shortfall. So our bureaucracy here is on its way down. I think if... Whoops. I think it's when the schools get enacted, then we'll be, have an institution for schooling. And that's going to cost me, yeah, because it's at 70 per level. So once school laws pass, we'll have minus 70 extra cost. So we'll be sitting at minus 30 overall. That's the warning there. Uh, we can counter that by having more bureaucracy, which is what our government administration will be providing for us. I could also potentially, if I cancel some trade routes and stuff, we would have that. There's actually some very nice little mini tutorials in the game. And of course, if you want to learn how to play, and you could watch some Let's Plays. But yeah, I mean, all the grand strategy games have a lot going on. I did find Victoria 3 to be surprisingly kind of easy to get into. There's so many massive complex systems behind the scenes that the more you understand them, the better you'll do. But I was, now keep in mind, of course, I have a lot of experience with the Paradox games, including Victoria 2. Um, but I actually found it to be remarkably kind of comfortable and easy to get into the game. So... Let's take a look at our wheat farms and things. I think they're all, yeah, so this, these numbers here, they're making huge profits. That's, uh, per week. I guess it's their productivity. 
yeah, there we go, per year. Yeah, th these things, they're, everything's turning a great profit. So those switches work beautifully. Um, textile mill. Yeah, it's just the one, so I can't split it up. We could import more dyes, but that would cost me more bureaucracy. So I think for now, we'll just have to wait on this. Let's go to plus five speed. The bureaucracy is, <laughs> yes, you're right. The bureaucracy he needs to expand to meet the needs of the expanding bureaucracy. One of my first uh, civ quotes. The, the tutorial isn't, um, it's not like a hardcore tutorially, you know, do click this, click this, exactly. It's like interestingly integrated in the journal system. It was just right for me. Whether it works for anyone else, I don't know. Okay, so the discipline in the religious schools is, the role of discipline in religious schools has been raised by the armed forces as an area of improvement in the plans for the new education system. So we could either, did we get whiskey and chocolate? Was that that? I'll have to check in a second. So we got two options here. We can focus on the curriculum. So if we do this, our religious school enactment time... Ooh, our percentage went down. That's annoying. But the time between ticks will go down. But it'll somewhat upset the armed forces. What They currently like me at a six. If they drop below five again, I would lose veteran consultation. Which is actually not a big deal. Because we're not researching military techs right now. Option two... Just... Yeah. So I can go with option one. That's fine. But... This is sliding backwards a little bit. I'd love to... If... This is so weird compared to how it normally my other games, but we could bring the Catholic Church into the government and that would make that much easier. Okay, we're no longer using all of our construction because only so much of it can be used for any one construction at a time. Um, I strongly suspect what we want to do is build more freaking iron mines. Yeah, I, we're not outpacing demand too much, but it is still happening. Alternatively, um, we're getting, we're theoretically going to get a technology for our mines. No, we're not getting a technology for our mines. Never mind. Because we also need more tools. But I think I'm going to go ahead and build a couple more iron mines again. One thing I like about this game, there's like 30 different ways to get to exactly the same function. <laughs> right? You can see, I, I decided to build iron mines here by looking at the state of iron mines in the market, clicking on iron over here. Let me shrink that down. And then from here being like, right, application shows you everywhere you can produce a good and where you can consume it. So I can produce it in Iron Mine. So cool, I'll just upgrade the mines in Calabria. Alternatively, what I could do is over in the building screen, I could look at Rural. I could look at my Iron Mines. And I could either specifically expand the ones in Calabria or click this button, which lets me build it in any one of the states. Although I only Calabria can support Iron Mines in this in Italy here in Two Sicilies. The other way you could do it is you could go down to your build screen go to resources and say I need iron mines. That's a, it's like, it's easy to find things because there's a billion different ways to get to the same freaking place, which is kind of stupendous. Um, there is not a built-in uh, save converter from EU4 to Vic E3. Someone, a third-party person will have to do it. I think Paradox said they weren't going to be doing it this time because there's not actually that many people that use it. It requires huge maintenance and it breaks every time there's a freaking uh, game update. Oh, someone said something, maybe build more construction. Um, that's not a bad plan, because we are, like, like making a ton of money. So the, the faster we construct... I'm going to put another one in Campania for now, and put it at the top. You know, the faster we construct, the more economy will grow. And yeah, right now the top prices are okay. I would like to expand our tools industry. Um, of course, that's going to use more iron, but I think we're actually in an okay position to do that. So if I go to Industry, Tools Workshop. So right now they're in Campania. I think I'm going to build it there anyway. Uh, it's predicting that we'd make more profit in Calabria and Sicily. The reason is these places have um, they have a lot more peasants, so the wages are a lot lower. Uh, but on the other hand, in Campania here, I gain efficiency of scale. So the more stacks of a building um, you have in one place, the more efficient it becomes. It gets a bonus of throughput. Ah! Okay. So the king can get involved and try to push forward religious schools. If I say the king's will be done, I get a huge boost. Plus 20% enactment success is substantial. It will upset the petit bourgeoisie and the intelligentsia, each by minus three. Uh, the bourgeoisie would mean we would lose the max amount here. Uh, we don't care about the loan interest rate, so that doesn't matter. The intelligentsia, we would lose access to... Oops, sorry. They would actually... They'd be fine. They go to minus four, which doesn't make them cranky, like angry at us yet. So I think I will push it. Especially since it's a minus 10, which would just fail our religious schools outright. 
So there we go. We're up to 30% with our religious schools. So every time it this ticks, 30% chance it just succeeds. But increasing the success chance, I think, also hey, cool. pushes hey, things a little bit more towards progress. the chance of a raw advance as well. Hey, Lord Helmet. Thanks. Also, did we get whiskey and chocolate? We did. Oh, uh, Fanyogs. Thank you very much for contributing to Whiskey and Chocolate Fund. And yes, one of my favorite Civ quotes. The bureaucracy is expanding to meet the needs of the expanding bureaucracy. I believe that's from Civ 4, because I think it's Leonard Nimoy who says it. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. Can you do same, two players in the same country like U4 and Hoi4? I don't know, actually. That's an interesting question. Okay, mechanical tools. Also, we clearly finished our construction here. Let me take a look at the market. Iron's probably still super expensive. Okay, it's getting a little bit more balanced. We still have a slight deficit, but not much. Um, I think I will go and build a, two more iron mines in Calabria, but now we're gonna look at other things after that. So let me clear this filter and sort everything by, I guess by market price. Now, sometimes the things at the top of the market, hey, Quill, to remember the market back. price is based on ratio of sell and buy orders. Like we have a slight shortage of porcelain. And we actually do make some, I think, because we have a glass works. I don't know, but this isn't something I'm, I'm super concerned about fixing. It's not a needs that most of our things need. It's not, it's not an economy thing here. For example, we're only short a tiny bit on this furniture, although we could produce that internally. Um, we could do liquor. Do we have a food industry already? Um, oh, Keekers, thanks for gifting us up to Plissick. Uh, what's that look? Oh, yeah, food industry. Okay, we don't have... Oh, no, here, right over here, right at the top, dummy. So a food industry produces... It, it consumes raw food um, and produces groceries, which, you know, packaged goods, basically, right? We're ta taking the grain and we're making pasta out of it. Um... So theoretically is a good way to make money. Right now, all the prices are kind of balanced over here. The food industry can also make hard liquor with these stills, which it is currently doing. Since liquor is kind of in demand, and actually groceries are slightly above average, we could probably let level this up one tick. So it looks like Calabria is the place doing it right now. And it is a profitable industry. I might give you an extra tick of that. So I think that's not going to be a bad thing at all. We have a lot of demand for furniture. So right now we do have a furniture industry, but I think it's small. I keep missing it, it's right at the top. Um, oh, we can do lathes now because uh, tool prices are better. I think tool prices were high because uh, we didn't have enough iron for it. So now that we have enough iron, tool prices have gotten better because production is fixed. So we can do the lathes. This will dramatically, well, plus 40 furniture. We're still gonna have a lot of demand for it, but it is gonna do that. We can get a lot more uh, luxury furniture, but you can see like the price will go from gold to basically nothing because we're only short by six. So this is going to be massive overproduction unless we start exporting luxury furniture. But I don't, so I don't think I'll do that, but I think I will uh, get an extra level of furniture production in Abruzzo. That's going to be okay. Steel tools. Yeah, we can't go to steel tools. Right now it says going to crude tools would make more money just because um, it would be consuming less iron. And also the tool price would go up, but I don't think we're really looking to do that. In fact, we're probably gonna be doing a lot more things that need more tools soon. Um, all right, I already got one in the queue. I won't queue up any more, but I suspect we can support more. Uh, there we go, sulfite pulping. We're gonna go and enable that for our paper mill. And I'm gonna get two more levels of paper mill going as well. Market square, yeah, you'd lose money because glass is too expensive. We might wanna get a little glass maker. Because a lot of our things as we move forward are going to need it. The uh, the better booze making is definitely going to need it. Oh, I can get slaughterhouses. Ooh, that's a lot of money lost. Because, yeah, we still don't have enough tools. So, yes, it is correct for us to build more tool makers. Because there's a bunch of our little industries want to use more tools. So, I'm going to go and... I'm going to go up to eight. We're going to go from four to eight tool makers. We're, gonna, we're definitely going to be knocking a price on tools up a lot higher. Atmospheric engine would be a big boost for our mines still. We would need to get some coal mining going, but we can do that. Yeah, I think we're going to research that. Now, that's going to be another situation where we'll, we might be in a spot where it looks like building coal mines are not going to be profitable. Um, because we're not currently consuming coal. But then at the same time, it'll look like switching our mines to a mode that use coal will not be profitable because the coal prices won't be matched. But if we build some coal mines 
and then we upgrade our mines to consume coal, it'll all work out. I've seen Egyptian Constantinople. Oh yeah. So Egypt won its war against the Ottomans and took Constantinople. Ooh, there's a good amount of turmoil over there. We'll see how that uh, shakes out. Man, any of the crazy stuff going on anywhere? You guys have good eyes. Well, because you're not having to do commentary at the same time, which is very helpful. Again, I got to check on Canada, see how it's doing. Okay, the US has almost pulled in all of these native groups within itself. At which point, look at that. It's already expanding hey, its colony over here. New subscriber. America! Uh -huh. Do, do, do. Oh, Keggers with more, or Keggers with more gift subs. Thank you very hey, much, Quill, Keggers. Attention, there's a new subscriber. Mm -hmm. And Faded Magus as well. Gifting subs. I'm sorry the message isn't right for the uh, the single gift subs. I still have to figure out how to fix that. Okay, opposition members put forth the man. So this is related to religious schools over here. So the intelligentsia, who currently oppose religious schools, have offered to change their stance were there to be offered certain political concessions. Such concessions would not be popular with the Catholic Church. Um, I would actually... Okay, that dramatically boosts our religious school pushing, but pisses off the Catholics. No, let's do it. I want to try to get some schools going. No colonization plans yet. <gasps> Tuscany wants to join our customs union. Absolutely, Tuscany. Okay. So now, our market here is going to be slightly different. Up until now, all the goods in our market were what we produced, but now Tuscany's in here. Um, so they're going to be tweaking some of these numbers as they go. Ooh, yeah, let's export some of our fertilizer. Oh, wow. Okay, hold on. How much wood are we short by? Oh, no, it's like even. The sell and buy are basically the same. We can import 350 wood from the Ottoman Empire, but I don't think that would be... That would dramatically lower the price of wood in our market. I'm not sure that's an actual help for us. Okay. So now that they're in there... See, we still have this. Oh, yeah, maybe we'll research nationalism next. Because theoretically, once we have nationalism, Tuscany might just become part of us on our way to forming Italy. Um, let me check my diplomacy here. See if I can boost more relations. There you go. Let's send you to Parma. I hear they've got some great cheese and ham. Let's do that. Hope you join in as well. So yeah, we won't be making changes as directly. And actually, Tuscany can even do imports and imp exports into our market over here. Maybe befriend the toothpaste. Yeah, we might. I mean, we're going to work our way there. Ah, Papal State want a trade agreement. Okay, we'll do that. So first of all, that means no tariffs between trade. Or like, between that. But might be pulling them closer to where we want. How are they feeling, Customs Union? Oh, they're only at minus 15. Okay. Excellent. You have to manually export goods. So... Yes and no. Some people might be... So if we take a look here, so tools. We're actually exporting crap tons of tools right now. That is not us. We're not manually exporting it. What's happening is Papal States, Austria, France, and Sardinia Piemont are all importing tools from us to themselves. Um, we do get some money from this because we do... I, I, Presumably we get that. We could also explicitly export it ourselves as well. So our prices for some commodities are going to go up and down, not because of our direct actions, but because of people might be importing and exporting. Of course, if our price of tools is very high, then no one's really going to want to import. Um, but it probably means, since everyone's got a shortage of tools, we can probably keep producing more tools, which we will be. Um, right? we got more tooling workshops in our queue. Uh, and then they'll keep buying it. And especially if these Italian ones keep importing it, they're more likely to want to join our customs union because then they get to ignore more stuff. We could raise tariffs on tools and make even more money. That's true. We'll see. So we still don't have enough taxation capacity over here. We'd like to fix that. And actually, I, have, I do have extra bureaucracy because I'm building the government office over here um, both to get the taxation capacity but also bureaucracy. So I do have extras. Um... If I actually look at my details, sort by balance. So we are wickedly overproducing fabric. So that'd be a good one to see if we could find a good export route. There, let's dump some fabric into France. Or actually, let's do it to Piemont. We won't make much money, but we're trying to increase the trade between me and the other parts of um, Italy. 
So we'll still do France over there, that's fine. What else are we producing a lot of? We do have a little extra sulfur. So let's see if anyone wants some sulfur. Prussia does. Papal States could use a little bit as well. So I'm gonna do that even though it's not profitable and do that. Again, trying to boost the trade between ourselves because apparently that might be one of the things that encourages to join a customs union. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple more construction districts. Boom, boom. Hey Quill, pay attention, there's a new subscriber. Uh, Mahones, thanks for the sub. Yeah, that Twitch Prime, baby. Gotta remember to hit those buttons. Oh yeah, I wanna, I'm gonna build a couple arts buildings and just patronize romanticism. That's an interesting question with France. Because with a trade agreement, then it eliminates tariffs and the cost of bureaucracy. This is gonna be really good if I wanna trade a lot with France to normalize my good prices, right? If I wanna make sure to export to them to raise the prices in my market, to keep my businesses going. If I wanna to import to lower the prices, this is really good for me. On the other hand, the tariffs um, do go to my government coffers. I, I think I might say yes, just because I think it'd be handy to have France as a friend. So I'm gonna say yes. And I do have some extra capacity for trade. Okay, let's look at deficit. We have a huge liquor deficit. Let's import some liquor. Uh, again, I'm gonna just take a quick look to see. I could import from one of the Italians, but it would be at a pretty serious loss. Hey, Quill, pay attention, there's a new subscriber. Now, that's a lot of booze. What are we short by? Uh, we're short by... Well, we're short by about 400 booze. So this one import trade route from Britain would basically cover our entire booze shortage. Sure. Although, Belgium. If it was beer instead of liquor, then maybe. Um, we Oh, so we're also super short on grain. We could build that ourselves, but in the short term, I'm definitely going to import some grain hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. from the papal market. And just that. More subs! Thank you! We got Sleebin, we got CJ Wally, thank you very much for that. Hey, we have religious schools. All right, so we're gonna get more education access, which is increased literature, uh, literacy. The literate pops are much more likely to become politically active. So right now, like our laborers are not really politically active, but if they, if they learnify how to read, then that's much more likely to happen. Still, education is gonna be quite good for um, innovation so that we can tech faster, as well as I believe it linked to how quickly they can become, um, what do they call them? The, uh, the qualifications. So that they can be qualified to be like shopkeepers and bureaucrats and engineers and things like that, which we're gonna need for a better industry. The shipyard is definitely not making money right now. Probably, yeah, because ships, well, man of wars aren't worth much. If I just switch you to civilian, yeah, that still wouldn't do much. I'm just gonna, I'll subsidize you for now. Cause I don't think it's gonna cost us too much. And eventually the demand for this is gonna grow and fix itself and be okay. Plus, I mean, wood and fabric could be a little cheaper, but yeah, I'm not gonna stress about it. I'm just gonna make sure that it doesn't. Cause having this will keep our convoy count up. Yeah. I know we're running negative money right now, but it's because of the mass amount of construction. We did build those extra two construction things. So we're burning through a lot more right now. And actually the price of all our construction inputs are, are have gone up because we're demanding more of it. So if we had more fabric, more wood, more iron, and especially more tools, these prices would improve. Some of those things are gonna be happening on their own. I'm actually gonna bring the one tooling workshop up a little bit more to start off with. But yeah, if we just paused our construction, we'd be making 21K per month or whatever, instead of negative 8K. And yeah, I've got gold saved up. We wanna do deficit spending. Um, if that number, if that negative over here ever turns red, like it, like it shows you here in red. If it turns red over here, that means you actually have an unhealthy economy where even if you weren't constructing, you'd be losing money. That's bad. Eliminate tax on liquor. Why would we do that? When we can, oh, whoa, whoa, some drama starting. Why would we eliminate tax on liquor when we can just convert that tax money into more buildings? Remember, we're not taxing wine. So, you know, we're not being un-Italian. So, oh, Montenegro is having a revolution. 
I don't think there's any reason for us to get involved in any side of this conflict. So we can ignore it. I mean, I could just literally click, like, declare neutrality. But yeah, that's when, whenever you see these, like, your military pop, uh, HQ start to pop up, you're like, oh, something's going on, but we're not actually going to be involved in any way whatsoever. Can you loan money to any uh, to other states? I don't think so. And I think with the debt, it's sort of debt to your own people, so your, your people can actually develop more wealth by being able to, like, buy government bonds, basically. So, because of tech spread, we got Napoleonic Warfare unlocked, which is giving us the ability to have mil mobile artillery for our troops. And we also got mass communications for more authority, which I really should be using more of. Mm, I mean, the authority can be used to do the levies, but we can also run more of these bad boys. Um, you know, I should run some road maintenance in places where we're doing a lot of construction. It also gives extra infrastructure, but it does boost construction speed by 10%, which is nice. I'll do it in Campania. We are building in a few places, but... Okay, what do you, what do you have running? Encourage. 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 Oh, okay, we don't have an Encourage in Abruzzo. Right, because they kind of have a mismatch of a few different things. Maybe I'll go ahead and Encourage Manufacturing because we are expanding the furniture thing, that's going to be okay. Um, we could... Uh, we might want to promote social mobility right now. I'll do that in Campania, because we actually do need a lot of qualified people over here. So with social mobility, we get more education access and more qualifications. I think that's going to be useful. Um, and the rest, we could start pushing maybe another law. Um, okay. Okay. cost us a bunch of loyalists, which, well, it's not that much, actually. If I did this, I could bring the armed forces in. Do they have any laws I care about bringing? You know what I should do? I should probably bolster a group. Let's bolster industrialists. So we're going to spend authority doing this, and this is going to make them more appealing, which will give them more power, which will make it easier for us to put them in government and also push through some of these changes. Oh, I guess this is how we get voting, maybe, versus the monarchy. Although, they're probably linked. Oh, we probably can't do any of these because we don't have voting laws. Yeah, that's why. We could let people start voting. But, you know, what do, what do they know? What do people know about running a country? It's like having Twitch chat trying to run a country. Like, what? We don't listen to Twitch. Yeah, people would actually support agrarianism, which is interesting. Well, we could push some poor laws. That's probably... Oh, that... Right, it would need a new institution. Hmm. Yeah, we can't do anything for healthcare right now. If we invented pharmaceuticals, maybe that's the next thing we should do. We could go after private healthcare. Maybe, maybe I'll just leave that. Maybe we'll just leave it. I'm used to, like, thinking, oh, I want to push through these laws as quickly as possible, but we can probably just absorb it. Already our deficit is, is shrinking. Because theoretically, people are getting wealthier, so we're, we're taxing, you know, like, we're taxing more and more, like, valuable people. We do need more government offices to get all the taxes, but for now we're okay. Outlaw that on that landowners. Yeah, it would be great to, like, the landowners are pretty, like, they're all regressive in what kind of laws they look for. Um, I could, rather than, than push someone, I could just suppress the landowners. Okay, so now with the migration, if we did get more migration. Here, I'm going to hit this because I think that's fine. Theoretically, yeah. So 
So a lot of the migrants that are coming to Campania, for example, right now are coming from my other states, but some of them, well, just went away, but some of them did come from Tuscany. So the more people we have into our, um, our market and the more appealing our territory is, the more we can kind of grab more people from the outside of it. Suppressing them is almost like boltering the others. Yeah, kind of, but you need 200 authority for that. Um, so I could cancel the bolstering of the industrialists and instead suppress these guys, but we'll just leave that there. Okay, I, I'm gonna go and get, I'm gonna do art. We need level two art for this, and it actually wouldn't be a bad thing for us to, uh, you know, just be a little fancier. So we're gonna make an arts academy. I'm gonna build a level two arts academy in Campania. Oh yes, nationalism. Good point. Probably nationalism first, which is one of the reasons we'd like to be friends with the um, intelligentsia if we could, because it would give us the discount to society cost. But that would be difficult for us to do. They're not super keen on us right now. And unfortunately. Oh, okay. I could put together uh, voting. If I did push one of the voting laws, the intelligentsia would really like it. The landowners would hate this. Okay, I could go to wealth voting and not radicalize the landowners. Census would do it because it gets them a minus 20. Yeah, I like elections. Let's do it. I'm going to go wealth voting for now. Yeah, everyone wanted the colonial exploitation. The thing is, like, we could pass that law and it still wouldn't do anything because we don't have any colonization started. We don't have any of the text to support colonization. Well, we might have a little. Um... Yeah, I mean, technically we can do it. But yeah, we need to get, like, to go into Africa, we'd need, really, we need quinine into civilizing mess, uh, mission into malaria prevention is really what we'd need to do things in Africa. Oh, City of Plenty. The most prominent members of Campania High Society have been seen organizing luxurious parties in the new and lavish urban buildings. Let them celebrate, which will make a bunch of loyalists, or the party will never end. Interesting. So this makes even more loyalists, but increases the minimum expected living standard, standard living in the upper strata. Currently, my upper strata... Um, but -da 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 -da. I guess I guess I'd have to go somewhere else to get a better breakdown for their minimum. Oh, here we go. So their minimum expected is around 17. It depends on the exact group, and they're currently mostly sitting at a 24. So raising the minimum to get even more loyalists is probably okay. Let's do it. I'll have to keep an eye on them overall. We'll see. Oh, I'm not making any more friends right now. Oh, I don't have as much diplomatic power as I... Oh, because the alliance cost! And the trade agreements cost! Ah! Okay. Oh, yeah, start, tre start treaty port. We could do... That's a great point. Should we do some diplomatic plays for treaty port somewhere? Interesting. France might side with us. Huh. We could change our point of interest somewhere else. Oh, you want a treaty port in Belgium? Is that is that the kind of stuff you're looking for me to do? Oh, man. What kind of nonsense is this going to make? Um, why can't I see it? Oh, over here. Stupid, sexy Flanders. <laughs> we leave Fr France may join us. I'm sure they would if we promised them an obligation. Although the obligation might be for me to join their trade thing. We puppet Greece. Oh, I wonder if we could do consider doing something like that. Okay, we have a lot of pop-ups. Oh, we have a lot of unproductive trade routes. Okay, I'm going to cancel that. I cancel this one in Spain. I'm going to keep the one to Russia for paper because it might rebalance the costs a little bit. 
And I'm going to keep this from going to the Papal States because it's sort of part of my religious er, er, relationship building plans. Also, is our market access borked? Oh, Calabria. You must have no infrastructure. Ooh, that's not good. Okay, so we may not want to be building more stuff in Calabria right now. They don't have enough infrastructure to move the goods. So the businesses in here are forced to sell 33% of their goods just to the local market here, which is probably not as profitable. So um, until we get railways, really, they might be a little bit stalled out. There's a couple other things like in uh, society tech, you do get a little bit of free infrastructure through urban planning and then modern sewage, for example, but it's not that much. Really, it's going to be railroad stuff, which would be exceptionally nice. Oh, back rooms dealing for the wealth voting. Oh, either way, it lowers our success chance. Uh, okay. Who is Leopoldo? Head of the industrialists. This, uh, no matter what, this is going to make the industrialists... Well, this is going to make the industrialists really unpopular and kill our wealth voting. Option two is also going to kill our wealth voting, but gives us a penalty to bureaucracy. Womp womp. I'm going to do that. We're going to cancel the wealth voting because it's basically dead. Uh, I can't run it again immediately, unfortunately. Um, we'd have to wait a year. I could go to landed voting at least, which most of them still like. And actually, the uh, um, landowners don't hate at all. Yeah, elections are fun though. It does it does shift some things around. Oops, Q by accident there. Let's wait. We're still um we're still trying to support. Oh, wrong button. Yeah, we're still bolstering the industrialists. Okay, who are already in government, actually? Um, okay, let me cancel bolstering the industrialists. And instead, I will go and... Ooh, suppressing them is... Oh, I need free speech laws to suppress. No, it's because they're in the government. That's why. I can't suppress them while they're in the government. Yeah, I don't know if kicking them out. One of the nice things with an election, when you have elections, is every time there's an election, you can uh, change these guys with, like, you can change your government without generating more radicals. But yeah, they're too powerful. I can't have them not in the government. I think I'm going to bolster the intelligentsia. Even though they don't love me right now. Okay, I'm going to let that trickle a little bit more. Oh, we don't have enough convoys. That is indeed the case. Okay, convoys are produced in ports. Apparently ports might increase infrastructure as well. So if we build a port in Calabria, yeah, looks like we get five infrastructure per level of the port here. Now, just one isn't gonna be enough. Maybe I'll build a couple of ports here, which still isn't gonna be quite enough, but that will increase our convoy production. So we'll look at that. Clandestine groups of academics are plotting against the state to advance the misguided cause, which I'm actually bolstering, I'm just saying. Leave them be. This just gives them more political strength, or we can punish them and make them radical. No, no. Let's boost intelligentsia. This is fine. Oh, uh, yeah, we can. you're right. We can give them a road maintenance from plus 25%. There we go. So that's improving their access as is. And then, yeah, the ports will give them a little bit more. So that's going to fix that. And at some point, we'll railroad them. But yeah, I didn't realize we even needed the convoys. Okay, atmospheric engine is done. That's gonna be great for our mines. Railways is good, but I think maybe first I am gonna grab nationalism, just that hopefully we can start doing some Italian merging, because that would be kind of nice. Make friends with you. Let's make friends with the Ottomans. Maybe we can get them to side with us against the Greeks. I don't know. Money reserves are fine. I mean, yeah, the, the reserves are nearly gone, but we're still hu turning huge money if we were to pause our construction for a tick. 
which like if I took a beat, we'd make huge money. On the other hand, what would happen is our um, our iron industries would kind of have a bit of a problem. So I actually do want to um, queue some more things up here. So let me take a look at our situation. See, apparently we are we are short on grain. So let's build up more wheat farms. Just cause. I'm gonna get a bunch of wheat farms built everywhere here. Uh, that might be too much. We are really short though. I don't know, we'll see. Oh yeah, we have the we have the plus 15 where, in Abruzzo? Uh, Apulia. That's actually ideal where we build it, hold on. I'll finish that one cause it started, but yeah, Apulia we should build it specifically. Thanks for the reminder. There we are. I think it's to all agriculture as well, right? Yeah, so that would include livestock, sugar, cotton. Too bad this is not where our silk farms are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh... Maybe I'll cancel the Russian ones. I'm gonna keep these up with my with my Italian neighbors here. I think that's a decent idea. So I don't think there's a button for me to push for the unification. I think it's just gonna start to happen. Oh yeah, we need we need nationalism, which we're researching. Would you, Great Britain be too spicy nation to play first if I've never played a Victoria game before? I I, I assume Great Britain is like is a handful because it's got overseas stuff. It's got a ton of vassals. I assume, but I actually don't know. Oh, see how much money we're making because we're not actually using all of our construction right now. But I kind of want to be using all my construction. If I uh, let this finish, hold on for a tick. Ooh, empiricism. I think right now our iron industry is just like tanked. It's not as tanked as I thought. You can see the market price has dropped, but it's not down to like a single cop or anything. But in theory, if we're not exporting iron and stuff, I suspect our iron mines are gonna stop being profitable. Oh, we do have coal mines. Now the coal mines are complaining that they're not profitable right now, but they're wrong because first of all, the problem is they don't currently produce any coal. So coal has no value right now because it's not being consumed anywhere, but we can enable that immediately. Our sulfur mines, are going to start using the atmospheric engine pump, so they're going to start consuming coal. And in fact, they're oh, they're going to lose all their money. Um, I think it's just like a little bit of mine to start using coal. I suppose I could just export coal for a bit. Because what I want to do, I guess, you know what I could do is I could subsidize the coal mines, build a frack ton more. We're going to need a lot. And then... Just export some coal for now, but then once we get a critical mass of coal mines, kill the exports and just send it all to our iron mines. Oh, can't export coal. No one wants it. All right. What about infrastructure? Okay, fair. Well, that's still in Calabria. Where we're still trying to build it up a little bit, but yeah, we probably will need more. I'll probably have to throw some more infrastructure up higher up in the queue as this goes. And maybe, you know what, I'll max out the port and put that there. And I guess I'll scale back on the coal mines a little bit until we know we're okay. Because, yeah, that is going to be a little bit limited over here. Oh, thank you! Coal can be used in urban... Yes, in the, um... Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a yeah. new subscriber. Ooh, new subscriber. Shady, thanks! Uh, yeah, the urban center can use gas street lights which burns coal in this case. I'm gonna do that. First of all, apparently it's gonna turn a profit on our urban centers. Yeah, it's gonna be a shortage of coal, but there yeah, our coal industries are gonna be a, a, a perfectly okay now. They'll make tons of money. Looks like we would turn a profit enabling the market squares over market stalls. Uh, we'd probably have some ga a glass shortage. What I think I'm gonna do is I'll actually look to import glass. Okay. Uh, we'll just import it from Egypt. That's fine. We'll get a little bit in here. Actually, let me get that as well. Yeah, that's kind of our bureaucracy limit, but that's okay. 
Oh, right, and we have a shortage of convoys. Um... Oh, no, we're okay. I think it's just recalculating. Oh, yeah, so we're getting 50% of the of Tuscanies as well to contribute here. Uh, these two want a duel. So this is the leader of the landowners and the leaders of the industrialists. I don't want to kill the industrialist popularity, although it might still be worth it just because the landowner popularity would go down. This would piss off the landowners, which is not necessarily helpful. Hmm. Yeah, let's let them fight and see what happens. So, the landowner guy died. All right. So he's been replaced, theoretically, by someone else. Wait, is that not the guy who just died? No. Yeah, oh, he's a traditionalist. He's even more, like, the landowners are already traditionalists, so he's even more hardcore. He's not like, though. Oh, he's a bandit. Interesting. Okay. That theoretically should make the landowners less popular. Hmm. All right, let's just kill those. Especially since it'll free up some workers. Paper and fabric is expensive. All right. So, Calabria right now, yeah, there you go, 100%. They're just at their, their infrastructure, but I think that will change. Yeah, they've got their unprofitable coal mines, but yeah, I'm subsidizing it for now, which I'm okay with. Because even though we are using coal in the one industry, there's not quite enough yet. But we should take another look here if... <laughs> at least most posh bandit, yeah. Um our iron mines. If we switch them over right now, they would still lose money. But you know, maybe what I'll do is I'll do this. Uh, the thing is, they're going to they're going to be less profitable. They might still be profitable overall actually. And I was going to say I could always subsidize the iron mines while we're getting our coal going up. Okay, let's see what happens with that. Papal States wants to join our customs union. Absolutely. Mr. the Pape. Oh, welcome to the party. What is this? Keepers Razi are pranky. I don't really care about you. Or do I? Uh. And I do care a lot about the industrialists. Oh, they like me super duper lots, though. We can afford to take a temporary hit. Yeah, I'll do this. That's going to be fine. What does the Pope contribute to the market? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, got some logging camps. Some paper mills. A little bit of farms, but not much. Yeah, I don't think the Pope's trying to dramatically change things over here. In terms of our economic balance. Are we making money while constructing? Again? Holy cow. It's like... Oh, we might have... We might have still had some... Um, some industrial stuff based. So if you look at our budget over on this tab, so capitalists invest in your investment pool to build things. Um, so if we were without building something for a bit, we may have had a little bit saved up. Do you still need to paper out? That's a good question. I mean, if it's unprofitable, we'll get a note about it. Oh, uh, I don't actually have a, a paper route right now. We actually don't have very many trade routes currently active. Some of these are much more profitable than others. Still want the trade with Sardinia because that's going to make them be maybe more interested in joining the customs union. So I guess when they're at the customs unit point, they, they seem to come to me, which is nice. Coal mine is still subsidized, which is fine. I mean, if the coal mine is, is profitable, then the subsidies won't take effect. So yeah, right now, if I take a look over here, we are paying zero in subsidies. If for some reason they weren't making money, then we would subsidize them. But I can probably turn this off now because we're, we're definitely going to have enough coal demand that the subsidies are going to be pointless. But yeah, I can do that just so um, nothing weird happens. Iron mines. Yeah, iron mines are going to have... Yeah, they're losing money. So I'm going to offer to subsidize them if they run out. Now, I think that's... We'll pay for them for now. They're going to be fine once the price of coal normalizes. Actually, it's not too bad. Oh, the problem is right now, iron. There's hardly any demand for iron. I guess we're producing way too much. Oh, also, we're not constructing. 
Hold on a sec. So I think we're going to be fine there as we start doing that. I'm going to take a look at the state of our market. We could use clothing and furniture building. Grain's gotten better. But I wouldn't mind going a little bit further on that. Uh, no, it's not here. It's Apulia. There we go. Not Abruzzo. Anyway, let's go to an even uh, 10 wheat farms. There we are. Farm all the things. And I'm assuming I'm encouraging agricultural maintenance. Yeah. How's your infrastructure? Oh, it's fine. Good. If anything, you need more taxation capacity. Are there more? Yeah, there might be some more upgrades we could do. I should check all of them, first of all, including the dye over here. Canneries. None of qualification. Oh, so if we want to do canneries over here, it's actually the price of fish that might make this a little less appealing. And the fact that we're going to be producing tons more groceries is going to bring the price down. I think it's probably okay to run this and then plan on building some more fisheries. And actually make more money with groceries here. No, I think I think with the canneries, we'll do this, which is going to bring the price of groceries down. I think that's going to be fine. Yeah, the hardwood prices are stopping things there. Um, we're not... I don't think... We, we don't produce lead locally. We could import it, but I don't think that's the way to go. At some point, we're going to have to get a steel industry going. Since we have iron and we have coal, I think we're going to make a lot of steel canned anchovies yeah oh arts industries well first of all i mean we're gonna set the subsidy on this we have two levels um to patronize romanticism they need 90 percent of their workers which will happen now because they're gonna have money to hire they need to have traditional art which is on arts academy traditional art occupancy 90 percent, which should now happen we should be hiring thanks to the subsidies so that should finish patronize romanticism for us Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Oh, trade agreement with Sardinia. I'm going to say yes. Keep trying to develop relations over there. Wheat farms. Can we have everyone making wine? Yes, all the wine. Oh. Uh... Okay, I'm going to go butchering tools. We will build more tools, and then that'll be okay. All right, patronize. Romanticism is finished. Isn't it romantic? So, for the next five years, we can get Arts Academy throughput. Or we could say, could you make it a little bit more realistic and get process, progress towards realism? Um, I just picked... Well, I don't know. Why, why, what's the appeal of Sardinia PMO? A few people have asked about that. And I just picked two Sicilies because it was in Italy. What's the appeal with uh, Sardinia PMO? I just don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm against it. I just don't know what the deal is. Okay, we don't have enough coal yet to upgrade our sulfur mines, which I don't think we really need it because we're not actually like that would tank the price of silver or sulfur. We did that for iron, but I think we can we can absorb the iron thing pretty quick. Oh, because they were the historical unifiers. Oh, that's why. Oh yeah, I don't know. I just, yeah, I just clicked two Sicilies. I don't know anything about history. What are you asking me for? Um, we could boost our military readiness, but I don't think anyone's really threatening us. So I'll probably leave it there. In fact, if anything, I'm tempted to just like our conscripted troops. We're not going to worry about goods for them. Uh, so recognition of accomplishment. Recent investment in Calabria, the raw goods industries result in positive balance for the fishing wars. Interest groups are quick to try to claim credits. Okay, we can pull more people into industrialists. More people and landowners we don't want or workers. So industrialists and landowners would disapprove, but more people come into trade unions. Let's make it so the industrialists get more credit. Yeah, Quill has played literal thousands of hours of history games. Also, Quill, I know nothing about history. That is 100% true and accurate. It doesn't help that I don't know real history, right? It's like, what are you talking about? The unifier of Italy is obviously the Papal States, and then they go on to form the Kingdom of God. I don't know what you guys are talking about with this whole, like, Piemont thing. We could get more taxes with more government industry in Campania, which would also give us more bureaucracy to play with. So, I think that's probably a fair thing to do. I'm going to get, like, a couple more government administrations in here. 
I've never gone very far into the game, so I don't, I can't, I can't speak about late game performance one way or another. I don't think it's gonna be, it's not gonna be like Stellaris or even Crusader Kings, right? The thing with like something like those two games is there's more things, there's more uh, in Stellaris, there's more habitated planets, there's more orbital habitats, there are more giant fleets that are going around. So performance can drop over time. There's a lot more pops, which is actually the biggest time um, a CPU sync in Stellaris, right? And with CK3, um, AI controlled nations kind of have like a, to only a medium pool of characters, but as you blob out in Crusader Kings 3, more characters are actually simulated to their fullest, so that can be another potential performance thing. Here, the number of states is kind of static, right? And if anything, someone blobbing up just unifies the states more and more, so I don't know if we're gonna see much of a performance difference uh, between late and er early and late game, especially, yeah, with the Warfare system. Papal states want a defensive pact. I'm gonna say yes, just because I want to keep buddy-buddy with all these guys. That's gonna be groovy. <laughs> Let's be friends with Egypt. Oh, that'll be a little concerning with the Ottomans, but you know what? It's fine. Couple of my um, uh, interest groups would like a presidential republic, the intelligentsia and the trade unions. Again, not super against it. Apparently the rural folk won't like it. I don't think I'm too worried about them. It's not going to radicalize anyone else. Is it time? Is it time? Monarchy for the win. Oh yeah, I forgot. The monarchy gives our landowners huge amount of political strength, which is annoying. Presidential Republic. Reduces legitimacy penalty from size of the government. That's handy. Frigate, let's do it. Oh, right, unless, hold on. That's right. I need to, if I want to complete this, we have to stay a monarchy or theocracy for 30 years. I don't know what happens if we complete it. But yeah, you know what? Let's keep going. Let's not, let's stay as a monarchy for 30 years just so we can complete this event. There might be, a, there might be a, um, an achievement for it. So we got to keep some more construction. So let's take stock of our situation again. Yeah, we really, I think we can really support a clothing industry, although we need more fabric. Like, building the clothing industry without increasing our fabric production is not going to work out. Oh yeah, market access is... Oh right, in Calabria. Makes makes perfect sense. I don't think we can boost the infrastructure any more than we have without railroads. If there's another mechanic hey, Quill, hey, that we could interact fabric. with, I don't know what it is. We might be exporting fabric. Let me take a look at that. Old Man Johnson! Thanks to the sub! Great name. My, uh... Yeah, we actually are exporting a fair bit. Maybe it's time to like just redo all of our trade routes. So okay, let's let's get some furniture or some uh, some textile mills. So probably I'll just do it in Campania for the stacking. Plus they have uh, the most infrastructure. I assume they're still good on that. Yeah, they have a, they still have a good amount in here. So I'm gonna add. Quite a bit, actually. There's quite a deficit. We could probably go up to 10, but let's do this first. There is an edict to increase infrastructure. We're already running it over here um, in Campania, the road maintenance. And that's the only place that's got a shortage. Woo! Look at those fists going on in Austria. Turmoil everywhere. There you go. Franco-Prussian War. Uh, where do we actually see the war itself? Because this is showing me a front. There you go. Prussia, Prussia versus Lubeck, actually. So France is on the Lubeck side. That's what it is. Prussia's currently winning, but it's costing them. I'm okay with this. Everyone's just going to like beat their heads against each other and like waste their money. I'm fine with it. Uh, we still need more taxation capacity and I can probably make use with more bureaucracy. Even if I'm not spending it, it's not so bad because it still gives us building efficiency, which ain't bad. Um, I think if we can get a university, I think we need to get universities going on. Let's go up to at least level three. There's nationalism. Okay. So this gives us more authority and leads to more, more things. We can run an ethno state, which we're not going to do. 
because it seems wrong. Although, I mean, one day we'll have to go hardcore that way. Um, stock exchange unlocked. This was just tech spread. Cheaper trade routes. Okay, don't mind that. Now, if I grab pharmaceuticals, I could run private healthcare, which would not be a bad thing. We do have partial research towards realism as well because we picked that option. I don't know if I'm going to rush to it immediately. We can get a little bit more free infrastructure with modern sewage, uh, sewerage, actually. Um, but it's based mostly on population, and Calabria doesn't have that much population. We could get the trains. Frick it. Let's train it up. Now, I'm trying to remember if trains... Railways use coal and engines. Okay. Okay. All right, let's start this. Because I think we there's a lot of things in here that do benefit from steel. So we might want to, you know, look towards that. Monorail, monorail, monorail. Oh my gosh, is it at four o'clock already? Oh, this is sort of bringing us to the end of the stream. I would love to go longer, but I kind of burn out my voice a little bit over uh, doing some extra room world streams. Ugh, I do not want to boost landowners. They're just way too regressive. Their power is dropping, which is nice to see. Um, rural folk... Or the Catholic. I'll boost the rural folk. I, I don't really, they're not something I'm looking forward to long term, but mostly just don't want to boost the landowners. Giuseppe. Staunch Republican and Italian nationalist. Still both commander and field. Interesting. So this gives me a general or career in politics. So as a Republican, they're going to want to stop the monarchy, which at some point we want to do, but maybe not right now. Oh, this is lit. Oh, hello. Yeah, so just as we just absorb more, this is going to keep pushing forward. put him in politics. Let's see what happens. Um, I, theoretically, he's maybe leading one of the branches of government, or one of the uh, interest groups. Uh, leader. Oh, there he is. He's in charge of the armed forces. He is cautious and meticulous, but he, he is loved. Absolutely. Heroic reputation. Okay, so the armed forces are going to become very influential. Read his name. Giuseppe Garibaldi. Okay. Yes. Garibaldi. Yes, he's, he's the important one. Not just the next beard. Right. Because our current leader is just like this guy with a terrible beard. Yeah, maybe we can get Garibaldi in there. Well, we need elections first. Let's see. Um... So yeah, we're going to be streaming this again on Wednesday, 100% for sure. And then Saturday will be more RimWorld Biotech, but I kind of want to keep going a little bit longer. If you guys are okay with that, we'll keep going a little bit more. I guess. Eh, some convoy shortages, really. I don't know, we have more convoys, but maybe it's because we personally don't have the convoys. A little bit longer. If I could talk less. Yeah, I can't do that. I can't stream in silence. You guys know this. Here, I guess I can cancel this trade route and free up a few convoys as well. Expedition of the Thousand. You'll know why he's so famous. Okay. Is that is that a button we can hit? No, I guess not. So atmospheric engine. Oh yes, if we can have oh! Uh, we could have more buildings running the atmospheric engine. Oh, it's probably the uh, the sulfur mines that's stopping us. It'd be, it would lose less money, but the problem with sulfur is still that there's just not quite enough demand for it. We could see if maybe we could squeeze out some more sulfur exports. Uh, yeah, it would all be at a loss. So I don't think that's worth doing. Paper uses sulfur. We could increase our our paper. Um, we could increase our paper production. How's the paper price in our market right now? 
yeah, okay. Yeah, we could definitely do with some more paper mills. Let's get a couple more in Campania. And your mode, you're on, yeah, you're on sulfite pressing. Great. Parma. Yeah, uh, they're not willing to join in right now. Oh, they're already in a customs union. That's part of it. Luca? Yeah. Oh, that's part of Austria. Is there a custom units map mode? What's... Oh, markets. There we go. Sicilian market. Yeah, PMO has their own market going on that we're having to kind of compete with. I don't know if we get a decision um, to unite Italy. I don't see it. I think this, when it reaches 14, then it might trigger. Um, we also have, we do have the option as a nation. Actually, I could hit form Italy now. No, wait. Oh, no, I need 12. Yeah, here. Welcome to Italy. Wait. Wait, what? Did that just yoink everyone in there? I thought it was just going to give us the tag. Oh my god, look at her economy! <laughs> what has happened? <laughs> I thought it was just going to give us the tag. Because I can do that as Canada. I can, I can become Canada while still not having pulled everyone in. Okay. Also, our name is not big enough on the map. That, that is completely inappropriate. Obviously, we're going to have to go to war against Austria to take some territory over here so our name can be embiggened. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. All right. So, okay, let me set you that way. That's going to be fine. We have a lot of construction sectors we've just pulled in. I'm going to finish these paper mills. But yeah, we're going to have to revisit our economy situation here and see what the deal is. Um... Our income's a lot bigger, but we've got more expenses. What are we going to do? A lot of it is government wages, apparently. This is going to upset the intelligentsia. What are they at right now? Okay, we can do this. This will give them a minus two. But they're still not going to be super duper cranky. Because I don't want to get them there. All the losing prestige is in the end of the world. The armed forces. If we brought them down, we'd lose the tech cost discount. That's fine. We're going to cut the, government, the military wages as much as possible. Oh, reset our consumption taxes as well. Because I think we're running more than one here. And let me cancel... Like, maybe all the things here. Uh, let me... Stop bolstering. Now, maybe I'll leave... Well... Okay, I'm going to cancel the resource. Agriculture. I'll probably want to run some of these, still. Uh, social mobility and road maintenance over here, which I was doing just for construction speed. We do have a lot of manufacturing there, so maybe I'll leave that for a tick. Okay, so now that I have authority again, we're gonna look at our consumption taxes and run things, there, there we go. Luxury taxes only cost us 100, brings us in a lot of money. Wine. <sighs> Can we really tax wine? We're gonna have to. Oh, it's gonna be a hard period for Italians. We could also raise taxes. The fact that this is in red means that even if we stop constructing, we'd be losing money right now, which is not good. All right. Yeah, all right. Well, tax services as well. You know what? Then I can drop taxes. Okay, I think we'll be okay. All right. Yeah, so we've got a negative money, but it's in white, which means we're only losing money while we're constructing, which is fine, because generally constructing is going to make you more money overall. That should hopefully be okay. Um, oh, stay paused a sec. The other thing I can do is change a bunch of these. Yeah, let's get everyone to use sweeteners. Let's everyone use everyone to do canning. Oh, we're being raided. Viking raid! Hey, Mordred Viking, thanks for the raid. We've just unified Italy, and we're having to fix our economy here. Um, because, because we just got a bunch of territory. Let's just make sure for now that all of our companies are productive. 
I can probably leave this on pot stills actually for a food industry. I think that's gonna be okay. Although I hate that little exclamation mark to show you that there's something new. I'm like, hold on, I'm just gonna make a little switch here just to get rid of the exclamation mark. Textile mills, uh, I still can't go to dyes because we don't import dyes. Um, I'll have everyone work on craftsman sewing and we'll just make sure to balance your inputs afterwards. I think our furniture manufacturers actually would be about break even on luxury furniture production. Let me... Oh, it's going to kill the luxury furniture thing. Well, and furniture's already expensive. No, I'll leave the um, non-fancy. Non We're going to keep the forest glass. Uh, we will keep the glassworks balanced where it is, apparently. Can't go to steel tools, unfortunately. We don't have steel access. I'm going to leave it at pig iron tools, which I'm surprised that it says that we'd, we'd make more money on crude. I guess because we'd be paying a lot less for iron and the price of tools would go up, but that would destroy our other industries so we're gonna do that paper oh we want all our paper mills and sulfite because we have sulfite mines we want the price of that to go up and we do need a lot of paper so run that that's gonna be great actually it's interesting it does change our production method from merchant guilds which are shopkeeper based to privately owned which is more capitalist but more capitalist means more money in our investment pool for construction later on i think our shipyards we're gonna keep on military ship building because it's a bit more profitable the arms industry yeah, we just have to keep the cannons. The smooth bores need steel. That's why it would be a huge money loss. So we're just going to balance it there. Urban centers, market squares are fine. We don't have a glass industry, or at least we didn't have one. Maybe we inherited one. I got, I didn't see it in the list. But we can run that. And we can run gas streetlight because we have coal, so that's okay. The arts academy, I'm going to turn off the subsidizing because we did finish that quest. We can save a few bucks there, although it does produce some things we might want, but we'll hold off. Government administration... That's a good question. Maybe I'm going to leave it here. So only some of us are going to do the, um, the, uh, what's it called? Filing cabinets, um, and use paper and we'll, re be, we'll rebalance it and we'll check the, uh, the taxation levels in places. We do now have Vatican City. Because we own Vatican City, we have just flat out more prestige. Ah, yeah. All right. Under rule, let's see what our status is here. Yeah, all these wheat farms, definitely I want everyone on soil enriching farming produce more grain. This is going to tank the price of grain, but then we're going to make sure that all our livestock is doing intensive graining, which or ranching, which will consume more grain and actually dramatically increase the cost of it. They'll balance out. It'll be fine. We're going to want our wheat farms producing wine for our Italian people. We're going to want to use... Ooh, we're going to want to use slaughterhouses, but we have to make sure our tools production goes up before we get there. So, um... Let me just freeze this for now. We have to revisit you. Iron Mines, I'd love to be on Atmospheric Pump. And actually, it'd be okay. It is going to increase the co price of coal a lot, though. Right now, actually, iron isn't that expensive. And it would tank the price of iron. I can hold off on that. I'll keep the subsidy up just in case for some reason some of the iron mines aren't working or some of the coal mines aren't working. But right now, we're not actually going to spend any money on that. We have very few lead mines. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on so we get a little bit more. Oh, lead isn't worth anything right now, but we're going to output more lead. And if I come back to my glass works and ask for leaded glass, this is going to use more lead than we've got, but we can expand our lead industry or something. But that should make our lead work and hopefully balance out. Yeah, we only have one lead mine. We'll probably have to build some more. Sulfur mine. No, we're going to hold off for now. We've got to rebalance all of our economy. And a bunch of um, imports and exports can also rebalance things for us. Looks like softwood's still the way to go right now. Fishing wharf. Yeah, more fish, which we can use in our food industry. It's consuming a lot of clippers. We might need to get some more shipbuilding to balance it out or import some clippers. You think I missed a steel mill? Did we have a steel mill? Oh, we did have a steel mill. You know, um, right now there's no input for steel. Huh. Did we have anything that could use steel as is? I thought there was one thing. Oh, tooling workshop. Would need 180 steel. Currently we produce 65 out of our one. Okay, let me leave on a pig iron. I'm gonna subsidize this. I'm gonna build two more levels of steel mill. This will give us just over 180. 
Once these are built, we can turn on steel consumption in our uh, tooling workshops. That's going to be amazing. All right, I'll turn off the subsidies. I think I think these guys are going to balance them out th themselves out shortly. But yeah, you can see it doesn't change my money here. There's an iron mine that would get subsidized right now. I'll just ignore it. Okay, I'm going to take a slight risk here, and I'm not going to be funding like my, my military in any real way whatsoever. Okay, so we're running a deficit, but it's not a bad one. Apparently, we're losing great power rank for some reason. Seems crazy. Going from great power to major power. Yeah, we'll be fine. We are, do have some places with poor market access. Okay, we'll fix that after we fix this. Well, actually, the steel mills will have a little bit left over. Uh, port input. Oh, that might be why. We don't have enough clippers coming in, which is hurting all of our ports. So what we need is our shipyards. I might, I'm going to have you focus completely on civilian shipbuilding. I realize you will make less money, but you're still going to be profitable. You're still going to be profitable, and you're going to give me more clippers. These businesses individually would make more money if they were making uh, military ships. But that's going to boost our clippers. Oh, downranking our military gives us less prestige. Oh, that makes sense. Hold on. What is this? Newspaper. Bigoted article about the blank people living there. Add blank to Lazio. A uh, bit of a glitched event. This is supposed to be picking a discriminated um, pop type and making them cranky, but apparently it doesn't matter. So we're going to do this. Okay. Oh, look at the deficit. Just like changing a bunch. Admittedly, we're not doing as much construction right now. Uh, we are definitely going to want to queue up some more. So... We have a dramatic shortage of hardwood and Man of Wars, which admittedly, we're not making Man of Wars the same way anymore. I think we just need a much bigger shipping industry. Although I think if we're going to have a bigger shipping industry, we're going to need more of a logging industry. So my thinking is our logging camps, which first of all, oh, yeah, we can have them specialize in hardwood now. But mostly I think we're going to need some more. <laughs> Yob Talk says, there's only two things I hate. People are who are intolerant of other people's cultures and the blanks. An excellent play on the quote from Austin Powers. One of my favorites, just because it's so, it's so funny. Okay, taxation capacity has actually been fixed, which is nice. Oh, I can do more declared interest. Well, well, well. I mean, we could consider colonial, colonial stuff. We could also consider... I mean, we could do colonization via warfare as well. We could move our capital. That's true. Our capital is still in Naples because who we started as. We could move it to Rome. Yeah, we don't have Lombardy, Venetia, South Tyrol, Istria. I think we're going to have to have words with Austria at some point. Okay, I have tons of diplomacy available because I'm not doing any diplomatic things. Let's make friends with everyone who isn't Austria. You know, just just because. I think we'll have to build up our own arms economy or industry to be like truly influential here. How's our convoy situation? Okay, we have lots right now. Um, we have way too much fabric. France. You know what? Uh, that's a lot. Yeah, we'll export a bunch there too. Um, we can't export services. Oh, apparently we're bringing tons of liquor. Now, we were importing it for a while. Would it show me if I had an existing trade route here? If I click back on fabric. Trade routes. Well, that's a good question. Are the new states incorporated? 
Uh, the answer is no, they're not. And we want to incorporate them so we can tax them. So it's going to cost some bureaucracy. First of all, more incorporated states gives you requires more bureaucracy in the first place. But while you're incorporating them, also takes uh, an extra amount over here. Um, most of these should incorporate pretty fast. A bunch of them are South Italian. What about the North Italians? Oh, it's still only two years. Cool. Yeah, so we can actually incorporate these really fast. Thanks for reminding me about that. Um, because we don't tax the people who aren't incorporated. Yeah, we had lots of capacity there. Oop. There we go. Easy peasy. Thanks. Person in New England is destroying Russia and Canada. How? I don't know yet. You get, when you get, as Canada, you got Big Daddy Great Britain on your side. You can do anything you want as Canada. You get all that power. Oh, hello. Ottomans want a trade agreement. Sure. Sure. Don't worry about starting something with Greece. But right now, I'm just going to focus on my economy. All right, money's going up. Oh, yeah, we're not constructing right now. Um, Okay, let's get our shipyards going on. Yeah. Actually, come... We need a motor, motor industry as well. But... Okay, economy of scale. Let's go. And then... Oh, yeah, Calabria has no more people. Oh, I didn't realize that. We may need to pull more people to Calabria. We're not getting enough workers. Ooh. Okay, let's start with this. Calabria. Oh, yeah, you're losing immigrants. Um, we're going to do a greener grasses campaign. There you go. Traction is now set to high. So hopefully you'll start getting people again. There we go. Lots of migration to Calabria. Now we're pulling it from other places in Italy right now. But we got to do something. Steel mills are finished. Thank you. So now we should be able to switch to steel tools here. And there we go. Turn a profit and have a lot more tools available. They're going to be worth slightly below average, but that is the right direction overall. We're very happy with that. Having more tools should, in theory, we can now run slaughterhouses. Oh, still at a loss. Oh, because meat's not worth very much. Huh. I didn't realize that would be the case. We can get harvesting tools over here, though. That's going to be nice. Sulfur mine. Can I do the atmospheric engine? No, you'd still lose. Coal is still very expensive. Well, maybe I should just increase our coal mines. Although... Oh! I have more places I can build coal, mine. coal mines. Yes! So, PMO has tons of workers available. Actually, I didn't check to see if you had any special traits. Yes, you're in the mountains, so it sucks. But you have the river to balance it out. Sardinia, you have nothing going on. Okay, I think we're going to get some coal mines. Let's start with five over here in PMO. That's going to be quite good for us. We can change our name to all the Sicilies. <laughs> I'd love to start thinking about war, but we got we got so much to do internally right now. Are we spending from the investment pool? No, that's all us. Uh, no. Yeah, that's interesting. So I don't need to do customs union shenanigans anymore because we needed that to unify Italy, which we've now done. Would we want to go into France's customs union? So we'd be in the same market as them. Uh, accessibility options. Um, I don't know what's there. There's a lot of hotkeys, um, and you can increase the font size and stuff. I think we're going to say no, but in theory, maybe we could pull a bunch of immigrants in. But I don't know. At this point, it's starting to feel like we're going for an ethno state. Yeah, we are rank eight in the world, which is good. How's our GDP? Eighth in the world GDP, but our per capita is down to, minus, to number 40. Because we have a lot of people relative to the GDP. Um, losing some interest soon, that's okay. Market access, that'll get better soon. We don't have enough mana wars. Ooh, we have a can-do attitude. Oh, is this the freaking... Soldiers are complaining they have no way to open their canned food. It is true. Canned food was invented before the can opener. We could spend a ludicrous amount of money inventing a can opener. Or we can be like, listen, armed forces, you guys suck. 
How's your GDP solid vertical line? Yeah, that's from when we like soaked in all the extra Italy's here, right? Same thing with population. We're getting a square wave here. This event, I know. I wonder if you say yes, and then you wait five years if something awesome happens. Oh, we're at negative influence here, losing some prestige. Could uh, cancel making friends with someone. Uh, let me cancel Bavaria. Bavaria has been canceled. It's not quite enough. Uh, let me just hold off on Great Britain for a little bit then. There you go, get our points back. All right, railway is unlocked. Yeah, baby. Okay, so this is really powerful for a couple of different reasons. First of all, if you build a railway somewhere, uh, I don't know if there's a good way to see. There you go. If you build a railway somewhere, for every level, it gives you plus 20 infrastructure. It also gives you a transportation good. Transportation good can be consumed by things. For example, our coal mines, well, all of our mines, could be switched over to rail transportation. This consumes some transportation and dramatically decreases how many laborers it needs, which A, cuts down on wages. You're paying for transportation, but saving on wages. But the big thing is it frees up a bunch of workers, which is gonna be great because Calabria has no more workers. So if we brought railway transportation to their mines, uh, and their farms, then we'd have tons more workers to fully populate these places and build more industry. So it's good for like two reasons. And your railways can be switched in two modes. One is more infrastructure and one gives you much less infrastructure. I think it's five per level, but considerably more transportation. So depending on where it is, you're gonna wanna do more stuff. And more importantly, choo-choo's on the map. So what I like to do for this one, uh, we'll go railway and We'll click here. We actually get to see the market. I actually don't remember that in the early build. It's quite handy. So we know there was a place that need more infrastructure for market access. Like that and like that. And we may have a quest. I know it's Canada. There's a few. I mean, there's steam engine time over here. That's we need a motor industry. We might get something else as railway starts to develop. Canada actually has a specific journal entry for the uh, Canadian National Railway or Canadian Pacific Railway. One of the two. Um, yeah. Yeah, Austria's have some problems for a bit. I'm gonna get the Bessemer process for our steel mills because I think we're gonna do more and more stuff with steel. Yeah, Austria's been kind of cranky within itself for a bit. So it'll be fun to see what goes on over there. Huge and increasing amount of radicals. Ah, eh. standard living. It, they'll rebalance, they're gonna be fine. They're gonna get great, well-paying jobs. Um, I just realized we have our taxes. Oh no, it's at middle. We could cut some of our consumption taxes and I suppose some of our people aren't getting paid as well which we can start fixing up. There we go. A little bit of deficit spending. What we need is a better tax law. But I don't think I can do that. New. No. I need egalitarianism. Then we could go to proportional taxes and it would give us a ton more money. Uh, we'd also need some people to support it though. Need to improve your pasta industry. Mm. Gotta get in the Austria thing. It's not a war I can side with though. There's no civil war here currently. Is there? Okay, this is a battle between Austria and Prussia. Yeah, I think I missed my chance to get in on there. Um, but if they've got so much turmoil, is this, hmm. Okay, they have 317 battalions. Although, okay, this might be incorrect. I noticed this earlier. Um, so the United States has very few battalions and a lot of conscripts. If they've raised their conscripts for war, it actually counts as their battalion total. Um, there's just a slight UI glitch in the current version of the game. Um, so Austria might not actually have that many actual battalions. They may have, they may have just raised their conscripts for the war. It's a little hard to see. Um, ourselves, we have 121 trained battalions. I would not be surprised to find out that's quite on par with Austria. But in practice, I think we need to, well, at the very least, we're gonna need to boost our, our, our military like allocations again, because right now we don't let them have, um, oh, I guess this is the screen I want. Right now we don't really do anything with it, but I think we'd need more barracks and we'd also want a bit more of a self-sustaining arms industry. Oh, railroad in Sicily as well. Uh, you're, that's a good point. Let's go ahead and give you a ticket rail, railway. There we are. And the rail industry, I'm definitely gonna wanna um, have at least the option. It is actually subsidized by default. And at the start, it really needs it. And yeah, this mode here, cargo prioritization gives us lots of infrastructure. This gives us more transportation. 
Um, so we'll see. It might be a case by case, state by state bonus um, option. Overall, I think I want the transportation thing as long as we have enough infrastructure. 18 years to get Venice back to be in real life Italy. Yeah, we can probably do that. Sure. Okay, paying off the debt, still making some cash. Now we're losing loyalists, increasing radicals. Makes sense, though. I mean, like, you know, we've got a much bigger nation. We've got a little bit of diversity, and it's still not much. We're basically going to be all North and South Italians. Tiny bit of French in here, apparently. All Catholics. Mmm, decline. I don't want a defensive pact with you. I do actually have some extra influence. So I'm not going to boost relations with Austria. Get Spain and Great Britain back in here. We'll try to have as many friends as possible. Is there Vatican City in this world? Yes, and we own it. I mean, I don't know if Vatican City is represented on the map. Oh, no, right there. Look, that's Vatican City right there. And we do actually have a special boost for it. Over in, uh, yeah, in the state of, uh, of Lazio, which is where Rome is, um, we have a Vatican City over here. It's a very special building that just gives us a bunch of extra prestige. Uh, we could run Vatican City itself. This gives us more authority and influence and Catholic Church political strength, or we can just run it for Mona's prestige, which is what I'm going to stay. So yeah, at some point, instead of these little wagons, we're going to see trains real soon once a railway finishes. And yeah, the map is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, look at look at the, the shits on fire, yo. They're cranky over here. What's prestige do? It is one of the things that affects your um your, your rank here. Right? So there's our prestige. A bunch of things contribute to prestige. Secret societies. Oh, of intelligentsia. Um, I, I want them to get stronger, that's fine. Oh man, tons of money all of a sudden. Okay, um, I'm just gonna make sure our economy is working relatively okay here. Uh, okay, we need engines and we still need mana wars. Now, so what I might want to do is have some of these. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and split them between clippers and mana wars. We still need more clippers, so what I need is more shipyards. There we go. We're going to do that. Uh, but then we need to get a motor industry started. Let's pick a let's pick a new state. We want somewhere that's relatively populated, but somewhere we haven't been doing much. Lazio. How about Lazio? I mean, that's that's sort of Rome. We're going to get some uh, some Italian an Italian car industry going on. We're founding Ferrari. Oh my God! We could found our car industry in Ferrara for Ferraris. I mean, I don't think that's where Ferraris are from. I think it's the family name. Oh, is there? I guess Emilia over here. This is where this is where uh, Florence is, right? Firenze. Because we don't actually have a state for Ferrara, and that's not across the border, is it? No. We could specialize only some of the shipyards, and that's probably the right thing to do. Ferrari is the Italian version of Suriname Smith. <laughs> Florence is in Tuscany. Okay. Not Emilia, but Tuscany. All right. Thank you. Ooh, pharmaceuticals. Hang on a sec. Does that mean I can path a healthcare system? Not a lot of support for private healthcare, although no one hates it. I'm going to start trying to run that. Okay. Just fixing the things I have critical shortage of. Oh, what's brewing here? France versus Yolov. Um, I'm just going to declare neutrality. And then we're going to build some military buildings. Sweden wants a defensive pact. I mean, I don't know if anyone's going to attack us. What we're really going to look for is an alliance, but maybe we can level up the defensive pact to an alliance later. I mean, is, I wonder if there's any chance that they might get attacked. Uh, relations to Sweden. Oh, everyone likes Sweden. You know what? Yes. We're going to do that. Okay. 
Um, maybe, maybe we can do better. It'd be great if we could br have someone as an ally in the war, but even if they're not an actual ally, they might still join us. Baking powder for the food industry. Well, we do have food industries. Baking powder. Hmm. Currently predicting a loss. Sugar would become, become very expensive, and groceries would not be all that valuable. We could maybe do a little bit of it. Like, maybe just the one in PMO here. Ah, you'd still kind of lose money. You'd be semi-balanced. I'm going to do that just so that it tweaks the other costs somewhere else. Glass works are still, yeah, sort of half and half. Hey, Hanoka. Thanks for the, uh... Hanoker Dave. Thanks for the sub. Is Vicky coming to Xbox and Pass? I have no idea. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I don't know that answer. Oh, urban centers can have trams. Although, yeah, we don't have transportation yet. Okay, railway has been built, so we should see... There's some trains! Hey, Quill, pay woo, attention. There's woo. a new subscriber. Yeah, we're making ridiculous amounts of money. We could support more construction, but I think what's going to happen instead is first we're going to re-enable... Like these guys, even our conscripts. We're gonna make sure they're a little bit ready. So that's, we're buying some military goods now to keep these guys kitted out. We're also gonna take a look at the market and the military goods prices. Yeah, okay. So small, all the goods, all the military goods are crazy. Apparently man of wars are worth like nothing now. Okay, I need to do half and half with my shipyards. Um, You guys work on civilian shipbuilding. Yeah, there we go. And all of you be subsidized. Ooh. Is that seriously? Oh, I think it's just the military that's really, really hammering that. We do still need... Yeah, we still have low market access here. All because of infrastructure. All right, let's get more of that. Railing up, but Calabria is fine now, which is great to see. It's very good to see. They still don't have very many workers left over. Oh, we can start shipping some of our buildings over. So, in Calabria, where we don't basically don't have any workers left over, let's start with the coal mines. We're gonna switch them to start using rail transportation, which currently predicts a slight loss because transportation is a little too expensive. We're gonna do that. We've got more rail coming in, which will give more transportation. And in some of the places where we have rail, but plenty of uh, infrastructure, like I might still want to build some rail over here because the thing we can do is we can make this rail be more transportation or passenger focused, which is transportation. I guess there's almost no reason to have my barracks changed until we have these. Do we have the tech for munition stuff yet? Hold on. Okay, percussion chat's actually about to spread to us, in which case we can build munitions plants. I think we'll probably need some chemical plants to be able to make some explosives. So I'm kind of thinking... Chemical plants. We don't have any anywhere. Wow. I'm going to start with five in PMO. Yeah, so um, if we get rail... Did we finish rail anywhere? Or, well, we did, but... Okay, Campania didn't need more infrastructure. Well, maybe a little bit. What I'm going to do in Campania specifically, their railway here, which apparently... Oh, has no engines. We did queue up some engines, right? I'll double check on that. We may. I think we just need to import some. But you are going to switch from cargo prioritization to wooden passenger carriages. So this gives us five less infrastructure. So I guess it's 15 per level instead of... Um, 20 per level. Yeah. But it generates a bunch more transportation, which A, is profitable for this business, but B, gives us transportation that is used for other industries. So we're going to switch that over. Motor industry. Oh yeah, I've got a queued in Lazio. That's right, but they hasn't actually been built yet. Let me bring one of these up. ASAP. Okay. 
thought you weren't going for one more turn, one more turn. I really have to wrap this up. There's just so, there's so many viewers here today. Um, so as a reminder, the next scheduled live stream, oh, should I just stream tomorrow? No, tomorrow I have to record more, um, more videos of Canada. <laughs> so tomorrow at noon Eastern time, 6 p.m. Central European time, 9 a.m. Pacific time, my next episode of the Victoria 3 as Canada Let's Play is going to go live. So set your, your schedule for that so you don't miss it. There we go. Munitions plant. We're definitely going to want to build some of those bad boys. In fact, I'm probably going to throw some down in the queue right now. Um, so that's going to be great. I really like my Canada playthrough. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, I'm just going to throw a couple down in here. Right now, yeah, it thinks it's going to lose money, which makes sense because our inputs are all screwy for it and everything like that. But we're going to make these work out. Um... You got a, pres a question from your Cornish partner. Any cultures other than English in West Country? That's an interesting question. It is just English homeland. So, no. There's no corner. It looks there may not be a Cornish culture, unfortunately. So right now there's some Irish living here that have probably just migrated over. But that's it. Are there Welsh? There are Welsh. There you go. So at least there's that. And then we've got Scottish over here. Hey, but unfortunately, no Cornish culture. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for the sub. So yeah, um, I think, yeah, tomorrow I, I, I'm going to be recording more of the Canadian Let's Play. I have to get six episodes already ready to go, uh, but I want to be able to dump at least a couple episodes a day on YouTube, so I'm going to try to record tomorrow rather than stream. Wednesday, we're going to be back here with Italy, and Saturday is going to be more RimWorld, um, the biotech expansion, which is being a really fun run over there. So yeah, no Cornish pasty. Ah. Oh so terrible i love those so much um yeah so we're gonna wrap it up here i think what i'd like to do is see if we can take a whack at um at austria that would be really interesting to see i mean they're currently in a war as well it might be a great time to hop on them but i don't know if we can import enough goods to make this work i mean short term i suppose i could but we'll see no pre no peasants oh there will be though uh in fact it's already freeing up you see we got this unemployment here um, Texic, it's because our coal mines are now using railroads, so that's freed up a bunch of workers that are going to get hired by others, and more of those industries are going to get shifted over. So, we're going to be A-OK. -okay. Folks, thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to see you guys on Wednesday. For now, we're going to be raiding His for Lux channel. Um, hold on. We may... What is what is happening over there? RimWorld is happening on a Kiss for Lux channel. So there you go. If you wanted some RimWorld today, you can get it over there. Let's raid them, give them some love, and I'm going to see you guys on Wednesday. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Or... I really should have had an Arrivederci. <laughs>